thing, but. All right, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. New theme ready. song. Heck yeah. Got that new jam on there. This is new theme song, D1. Mm. You guys didn't talk. You're supposed to talk over it. I'm no, talking. Someone's alarm. I'm not. Going yeah, background. someone's alarm is going. Hey, me, baby. Alarm? Yeah, it's yours. Some, like, music thing is playing, Josh. <laughs> you are listening to episode 82 of the Paper Player Podcast. You may not see my face because I'm sick as a dog, but I have new AI gen... Oh, sorry. I have a new photo <laughs> of myself on there, um, but... Aside from all that, before I introduce the rest of the cast, uh, I just want to let you guys know you can find us on Twitter. Uh, sorry. You guys can find us on a whole plethora of social medias, but the easiest way to find all those things and different ways to uh, connect with us via the cast is through our link tree, which you can see through all of our profiles and every single avenue. But aside from all that, I'm here with Josh, Jeff, and JB. And before we get Are you sure that, Jeff is here? Look at that. He's I don't gone. see him. I'm Either. here, bro. He's here. He's just at the sky looking up high. Um, Josh, how was your Christmas? Or how was your holidays? It's okay. I had okay. It was I had a good Christmas. Did Santa come? It was interesting. Huh? Did Santa come? It was interesting. It was interesting. <laughs> I so did sweet. get um uh, to frame a bunch of my concert posters, which is my new nice. thing, which is Framing concert posters, so I've got three posters at the Framer right now. Where do you find that? Sick. Huh? Where do you find like concert posters? Do you just like ones at a concert? Go? Oh yeah, got them. Are they the ones? Are they the oh, ones that? Oh, like, where else would you find them? Ah, you can find them in like garage sales and stuff like that. Be... For what it's worth, like framed concert posters, like the one, like if I tried, I've been hunting like old Bonner roof posters, like from the years that I went, 2017, 18, 19. Yeah, and the one yeah, if I 2017, 18, 19. I have the 2022 one. Yeah, but um, they like when they do go on eBay, like if it's framed, it's like over five hundred dollars, and if it's like just the poster, it's like two hundred bucks. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like tool posters, if they're like t- frame tool posters, go for like two thousand dollars. God, it's crazy. I mean, it makes it's it crazy. People like, dude, nostalgia. Wall art, dude. Yeah, nostalgia. That's my new thing as an adult. Wall art. Yes. That you give me one of your twenty twenty three goals. I mean, if I could move my camera, I'd show you. Frame posters. Yes. I buy a poster or two every single time I go to a con of something I like. And uh, and I kind of like collage it together, and I have a giant wall that's like covered in different things. Sure. To my left, over here. Okay. That's so cool. Well, JB, how's your holiday? Oh, it was all right. Did Santa come? <laughs> huh? Did Santa did Santa come? Yeah, I got a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> Santa said it's time to duel, and he handed me a big old like three decks. It's great. You will be Can't sent. Wait. You will be sent to the Shadow Realm. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm waiting for my Give heavies. me a personal tour. It's great. It's my, my Harpy's Feather Dusters aren't here, and I'm pissed. I got like 10. You can just have one. Okay, thanks, bud. For now. <laughs> they get it back, though. You got to win it back for me? <laughs> That's Battle you better believe I'm going to rare hunter you. Oh, yeah. Nice. All right. Jeff, do you have a good Christmas or holiday? I did. Um, got to relax a lot. Santa brought me a bunch of Legos, so I'm super excited. Like... I just got this in the mail, the Mandalorian helmet from Star Wars. I got to build. You said Lego, right? Yeah. Huh. I've been getting really into Legos lately. Uh, I got, like, one of the droids from the Star Wars game. Like, it's, like, a foot and a half tall. Oh, wow. Dude, those things instead just of, dropped mad Instead stacks. of doing puzzles, man, I like doing Legos. Oh, Legos are better for your back. Because puzzles, like, me and my I wife disagree, get, like, Because whenever I do Legos, I end up, like, moving around seven, 800 different like positions trying to see the pieces because so I'm blind <laughs> alright well that makes sense usually for like a puzzle you're hunched the whole time looking like we have a yeah, thousand that we're, true. we're doing like a thousand piece one it's like oh my god and it's it's the it's like a it's like a photo of the Grinch coming down the chimney and if you've ever <laughs> seen like Dr. Seuss style like how he like his, the art is it's kind of like hazy and oh yeah like, it like oh blends my. together it's there's like, no defining lines it's so and there's a lot of just straight white pieces with no like color on them Ugh. it's like holy crap this is this is way harder than what i anticipated but get the edge done 
<laughs> the easiest. That's the part. most important part. <laughs> if you yeah. if you can't get that done, you better forget it. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, my roommate started. Uh, I think it was like a twenty five hundred piece puzzle like a couple months ago. Yeah. We got halfway through it and realized a bunch of the pieces were cut wrong. Oh, oh no! So we couldn't like, real finish bad. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You're right. super mad. <laughs> yeah. And this is like this thing we wanted to buy where like you can you can basically make your puzzle mobile. It's like this fancy giant canvas looking thing. It's like eighty to hundred bucks. Oh yeah, you can move them around. Yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. real sweet. And we should have done that because now we're stationed in this one area. And I was like, oh, this is the worst. But me and the roommate have been looking at like glass cabinets for like display because he like builds the Legos too. Sure, It'd be really mm-hmm. cool to like because I have them on things, but I still get nervous of it just falling. Because then I'm gonna lose pieces, and it's so annoying to contact Lego to send you new pieces. Yeah, dude. I went. To, I walked through like a Barnes Nobles, and I was w- looking at like Legos because I was like, let's do Legos instead of puzzles. And then I saw like a Darth Vader one, like just the helmet. I'm not into Star Wars, but it's like that's what Dar- Barnes Noble had. It was like 150 bucks for that. I was like, all right, well, I'm, off, uh, I'm, oh, off, I'm hey, off. Barnes Legos. Nobles is overcharging on the website. I think it's like 70 because that's what I paid for the Mandalorian helmet. Yeah, I was like, I'm I'm off. It's so hard. Mm-hmm. Like, the most expensive one is that droid I got that's like a foot and a half tall, and that was a hundred bucks. Yeah, forget that. I'm off it. But... Me and the girlfriend want to get the Hogwarts castle, though, but it's like. You got like 500? It's like 350 bucks. I'm super mad because for Christmas or Black Friday, Lego had the Death Star, yeah. which is normally 350 bucks. They had it for like $80. And I didn't get it, and now they discontinued it, and the cheapest I can find it, like, unopened, is, like, $800. Good luck. <laughs> you, you might as well just go spend your Lego money anywhere else. Oh, I'm going to. I'm just going to get some, like, other stuff. That's a collector's thing, but, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, this is part two of the end of the year show. This one, last week's episode was a little bit more forward in the sense of uh, we did kind of things that were black and white. This one's going to be a little bit more... Um, how you feel from a gut perspective rather than like just factual hey this is as jb would put it pull it up on mgd top eight and we'll see how many top eights it has and so forth <laughs> so there's not really yeah. there's not, it won't be really black and white but aside from all that um we have legendary creatures i want to go over and by the way there's 350 of them printed this year so um, many insane. the planeswalkers of 2022 the top eight cards for commander um uh RIP cards, I'm sure if I would have spent more time on this, I would have been able to figure out some more, but I wasn't able to find that many. Uh, the best to, or ranking the worst to best mechanics of the year, um, so such as like initiative and so forth, uh, the top eight sleepers cards that came out, and then we can do the what the hell cards for fun. Those are all the cards that pretty much got printed and then just didn't have a home, or the mechanics were just poorly done, or just like there's a card that should have had ninjutsu that didn't have ninjutsu, but that was a ninja. Um Aside from all that, let's just go right into top eight legendary creatures. Man, a lot came out this year. Um, the ones I put off to the left are ones I liked, and then I realized this list was too large, and then I went over here and put the, another list over to the right, which contains of Gix, Shieldred, Benny Brax, Greasefang, Giada, um, Harbin, Van, uh, Vanguard, Aviator, Hinata, Ishin, Meryl, the Beam Town Bullies, Soul of Windgrace, mm. Saturo, Umazawa, uh, Ragar, Harris Keeps Overload and or Overlord, and Auntie Blit or Blitz, I think. Um, or Blights. That's the new one from Jumpstart that basically anytime you take or one of your I think you take damage, it gets counters. Either way, it's cool. Um From these, do any of these stick out to you right away? I think okay. Hinata should be on. Well, I don't know. It was standard, but that that deck was like insane. Even if it's cool, it gives a different theme to Jeskai. Agreed. It was a lot of fun. I I don't know. Like besides standard, I don't know what its competitive level was, but being able to cast Magma Opus for like two mana was yeah. crazy. I'm gonna put Shielded over there just because. Arctic Commander, like favorite. Which one? Ishin. Oh, this one is the double. That's the double attack triggers. Oh yeah, that one's always a good one. That one rules. I think attack it's attack harmonicon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me see if I can pull it up. Yep. So if it's a creature, if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability, so essentially it's great with exalted triggers and so forth. It's just sweet. Um, yeah, this is this is. Uh, I love this card. Anything that's like a panharmonicon effect like that. That's why I like this because it actually takes that effect and moves it to a different zone. So I, I that's the only reason I pulled this one off. Also, it looks like it looks really sweet, especially the different versions of it. Um, so if you like any panharmonicon, are you upset about that one that uh, everyone's really mad about? 
Uh, what is it? Oh, the Elish Norn. Yeah, the Elish Norn. No. The, the, no. the Commander Committee was talking about getting that. They, they, they were they were they were talking about they were talking about banning that one in Commander. That's so ridiculous. I don't know. Uh, you know what? I don't Wait, care. Man, it's five Pet cards. It's my, Commander. Uh, bro, like... But you know, Soul Ring. Yeah. It's people lefty. forget that you can jewel out. You can jewel Lotus it into play. You can put it out on turn two. You know why? You can put it out on turn two. Yeah. <laughs> just letting you know. Genius. Either way, you can get it down on turn two, and it's not just creature ETBs. It's every ETB, and like people are like, "That's, that's fine." I know. It's just play play a source of plowshares, and you'll be happy. You don't have like yeah, like actually play removal instead yeah. of playing. So the, tired like, of this. This. Boring. Anyways. <clears throat> I can't. All right. I can't. I, I want to add my big guys. I'm gonna add Grease Fang just because I think it's like the best vehicle. Guy, um, enabler, yeah, yeah. Good. yeah. That's also another uh hit. That's a great for angel decks. Is every angel yeah. like legendary was either like Linvala or the look, the five banner one that gave all other angels, but this gives you another front to play. I'm gonna add the beam town bullies. I think this is a I great was about to say, there's two cards that I really like on this uh, list. I don't know if they're very Linvala good. Linvala was gonna be so good, but like that card was underwhelming. What the beam town bullies? No, the no. Linvala guy. I mean, I it was, that, that was, was good, so but cool. like it's just. It's when not it first good got enough. spoiled, and like I got my buy box promo and all that, I was like so hyped for it. But then it, it's no, just the abilities. Like, like, oh. You're just doing every that's, whatever you sneak and show deck always did. That should be in the flop. Okay, I can leave it. I, I can put it back. And the reason I liked it is just because I loved all the memes of just Blight Seal with the Naruto headband on him. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Did that anyone, made me laugh. Oh, that's right. That's that, that one. Gotcha. Did anyone even ever do that? I doubt it. No, oh, I'm uh, sure. It's it's one of those generals. Like if it's in play, everybody's always like, okay, block all those creatures, and then you just kind of shut it down from there. So you have to like find a way make it unblockable, which is just if it was a one four, and you could team up with like that, uh, the the one three from an older set that either if you have one toughness if or one it's power, it's unblockable. Yep. Yeah, that's I think that's I mean, where it went. If your argument is that no one did it, everyone was talking about leveling, level levelering yeah. people with beam town bullies, but no one ever did that either. This is one of those Jinkataxis yeah. on either of these lists. Jinkataxis, I so I looked at the effect like multiple times, and it was, it was like first off, I never saw anybody in play with it yet. I don't know if I, I Another mean, card that like I it's thought it was a, a standard play for a very 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 short period. Uh, like maybe, maybe a week or two. I can I can like add them. Let's, if it's I don't think it's worth adding. Okay, I just had to bring it up. Okay. Um. So isn't that Lauren of the Third Path like a legacy? This all just time? I added this because it makes soldiers going to blue white now. <laughs> I don't know if it's good enough. Yeah, okay. it's just medium. Cards are real good. Okay. Uh, one plus one and flying is insane. Well, it makes I you... mean, I really like. Oh, well, it's all a grace, but yeah. uh, but it's bad. So you can take it out. I don't think it's bad. I think it's good. You steal other people's lands. As a lands player, it, it's great. Yeah. So if it's from any land. Like you play steal, the, the fact that you can steal other people's lands is great. So if you can't afford a Gaius Cradle, you can wasteland their Gaius Cradle and take it. Is a reprint? No. 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 It's from Down Near United. A card that looks exactly like this. Uh, probably. It's uh from the first Commander decks. The um, there was the Caridor? ghost. Caridor? Like, is that his name? What do you guys feel about I'm Benny Brax, the zoologist? Caridor. This is the... This if... is the first time I ever looked at this card. Okay, so this was... An, it's a white elf, and it's mono white, and then it, it's... If you created a token, draw a card. So it's a token generator thing for white. I don't it's know if it's any good. Eh. It's pretty good. It's a $10 commander like, card. It's cute. Okay, I'm going to leave it off then. If it doesn't... If it doesn't, if it doesn't rustle your jimmies, I'm off it. What about Gix? This card rustles my jimmies. <laughs> Black, uh, Edric. Right, this card's nah. <clears throat> I'm gonna move it he down here for a second and just see. Which be fair, since it's come out, I haven't played EDH, so. Yeah. Um, I like this card a ton. For what it's worth, neither have I. <laughs> I do like this card a lot. It's good design. I like the anime art. Let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Put that I on there. Never actually read, like, seen this card or played with it. It's so, from it, Jumpstart it's brand 22, new. That's why. I can't deny the hype, though. $15, you got to be desirable to command a price like that. Well, it's, it creates a deck where you have to find a way to hurt yourself because then you get all the counters here, and then you can start mm -hmm. one-shotting people. So um, there's a combo with it. Uh, 
Hellion? It's mm-hmm. from Future Sight. Uh, I wonder if you can pay life. No, it's you actually deal damage, you don't pay life. Yeah, volcanic uh, uh it's the one at the bottom. All the way at the bottom. Did I miss it? Right here. Oh, one? Yeah. Yeah. Helion. yeah, there's like another card that there's another I, combo with this card. So your I echo is your in. life total, so it comes in it deals damage of your choice to anything. So you basically go like twenty damage to this, and then you're like, Okay, next turn I'll just take twenty life. Um as echo acts where and then you know whatever that may be. And then uh yeah, you just take all the damage, put a thousand counters on the thing in just one shot, and you can turn three, turn four it. So that's crazy. That's pretty sweet. Like it makes cards like this desirable, even though this is bulk. I like when yeah. cards do that. I had that from uh the original Commander Legends dude. What was his name? Jared. The mm. one where if you have the monarch and he's dealt damage, everyone loses that much life. Okay. And then this one is a the this card gets a bad rap. Um, unfortunately, there's just a better partner of a Cobalt that everybody plays. Plays, but yeah, um, this Romantic. guy this guy does make Cobalts like a deck. Like you get all the crappy Cobalts. He yeah, he's like true Cobalt. Yeah, he's like, okay. I'm gonna uh, here. Cobalt Lord. Yeah, this one is Rogue, just the other Rogak is just easy. This is that uh, this is just, that card's so good. It's super good. This card's really powerful. Really good. Um, I'm gonna move it over. Really there. good. So we got we're good on uh, Umazawa going away. Yeah, yeah. I love the card. Didn't but... see anything. And I don't then, even know what that card is, but get that out of here. Okay, so we're get that uh... bull crap. Out of okay, here. so we gotta go number one. Okay, hold shielded. On. Shielded has no. number one. It just feels. You guys love it a lot. I'll give it to you here. Okay, shield I still think it should be Grease Fang, but I mean, so no, do I. But I don't think, I'll give you Shield think, here. I think Grease Fang's way, way, way worser. In uh, way worser. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm moving stuff around. You're like moving difficult. them over and over. I don't have to. All right, I'm gonna go Shield one because it's just the bee's knees. Everybody does. Yeah, I like it. Jeff is like. It might be Grease Fang until he's like, no, this is number one. I can't, no, no, because <laughs> Grease, no, Grease Fang is better one. in Pioneer. <laughs> Grease Fang is like, no doubt, way better in Pioneer. Yeah, way yeah more but everything else, it's like. But like, Shieldred's way more of an impactful of a legendary card. You're like, oh yeah, yes. nobody pay for this guy's risk of study. Just let him draw out and die. <laughs> Put it this way if you opened one in a pack, which one would you be more happy to open? Well, come on. One, one of them's like 60 bucks Depends. and the other one, yeah. All right. Anime art or regular art? If All it's the, anime art for that, then you get the like Phyrexian beat or, pick or, art. So the, for, the, the, the only reason I say with Grease Fang is Grease Fang for a vehicles deck. There's you don't get like t- like there's only two really good options, which is the same as like for Pioneer. But as far as like EDH goes, there's just not a lot of vehicles yet. This card will get like progressively get better as they make like here's a 13 mana vehicle that's Emrakul. It's you know Emrakul's go kart, and then <laughs> Emrakul's go kart. Yeah, like that. don't don't worry. There'll be an un, there'll be an unset. There'll be an unset that has like oh this time you know how much you guys like Mario Kart. Well, this one is all about racing. <laughs> so there you go, Mark Rosewater. Just don't let's trademarked here. I want my cut. <laughs> He's um, not allowed to. Yeah, what a dunce. All right. Um, I think Isan is really good just because I think that that effect is sick. I don't know where it lays, but I'm moving it over. I know it's going to be in the top eight somewhere. Um, Beam like to- be higher. Beam it's Tom like Bully really, like, is unique. Really well, like, that's low on the top eight. If it makes it's sense. low, but it's cool. It's just it made cards like Leveler and all those other nonsensical cards. And just being able to like, here's the trash for my, my – yeah, you take this trash. <laughs> also – Yada is high. <clears throat> Also, people forget that there's a card called like Homeward Bound or whatever. What, what's that one called? Not the movie. <laughs> Homeward Path. Yeah. Homeward Path. This works amazing. It's like one of those like combos. Yeah. The tit of the movie is choice. <laughs> what was Shadow. What was the cat's name? I don't know. Sassy. Sassy and then Chance. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Okay. I'm moving this guy. Then hold over. All right. So we got four I just over here. That movie a couple months ago. So we can Freeze move. Fang. Get it in here. I'm gonna put it down here. High. I don't know. Oh, get no, out of here. Giada should be high. Giada's nice. The top four should be top four should be Shieldred, Giada, Ishin, Grease Fang. Okay. I don't know what the order's gonna be yet, so I'll put him here. I think it should be Shieldred, Grease Fang. Uh, you, yeah, it is that way. You're right. Okay. Shieldred, Grease Fang. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. You said it the right way. You did it. You just. All right. So between these other five. 
Hinata is interesting because it makes like targeting spells like your X spells a lot better. Oh, it's so good. It's super fun. And then it also attacks yeah, your I opponent's stuff. I, I see. I know this card, but. Dude, I've in standard, seen. it felt like casting ultimatums back in the day. Yeah, with Magus Opus was oh, ridiculous. Oh my god, that was two that was mana yeah, on that, your opponents. That turn. was that was crazy. That's dumb. Yeah, but oh. uh, aside from all that, that like just even like Comet Storm and all that things. It, oh you, hell yeah! If you target nine things with your Comet Storm, it costs nine cheaper. So um, it makes X spells something better. I'm gonna put it over here for now. All right. <clears throat> to me, I don't think Gix gets it. I, I like it. I still but don't think Wind Grace gets there either. I think it's it does. It's not strong enough. I, I really do. I, I like land themes that aren't Lord Wind Grace because this is the other version of that. There's Soul of Wind Grace. And it still keeps popping up in like standard and stuff. It does. And it EDH does. loves it. It's better than Gitrog. I'm going to take this off because the, the Zero Mana one is, is better. Is it better than Gitrog? No way. No, actually, I just think it <laughs> is. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make it mad. <laughs> I like what he said. All right, it's I'm going like, to move this. No. Ragarth, um, just because nobody's picking up Cobalt. So, one, three, five, six, seven. That's right. I didn't have to say anything. Yeah. Um, it's either everyone I knew immediately. You were talking Myrel garbage. or Soul of Wind Grease. They're both great. And you, you, one of these could also come off too for one of these. Hey, I got a question. Okay, You're spending but... way too much time on this. No, we never will. Why didn't um? Where is it? I know oh. I have it in my legacy deck right here. Guess what? Shit. Did you um, say the dumb ticket card? Yes, I am going to say that. <laughs> Myra the Magnificent? That's no. a great legendary creature. I, sure. This card right here? Idea. That's actually not a bad how do I, inclusion. How do I get this it's not, it's not. It's not. This card is great. It's it's the worst of the blue-red spellcasters. No way. It is. It just is. Agreed. There's I just way get to play version. a bunch of free cards. Right here? I'm saying uh, no, no. I'm just saying like, what, so one well, of the things. 2022 is what we're talking about, right? No, I'm yeah. just saying like things. So we what, are uh, okay. But would you replace any of the current blue red spellcaster decks with that card? No, you wouldn't. You. That's you. Right. It did. It was one of the best legendary creatures that came out in 2022. Right? <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> That's not it true. Is. <laughs> I won an F and M with it. I off. can I can attest to this. You okay. cheated. No, you didn't cheat. What you did was you made somebody so upset that they questioned playing Magic again, which was a fantastic <laughs> thing that happened. I, I give you that. But <laughs> as far from that, like, and you can put the other two however you want it. I like this top eight. Yeah, I don't um, care. You can put Win Grace last. I don't know. Whatever. All right, Tony's going to reorganize in the way that he feels is correct. <laughs> feels right. That's why I don't ever really yeah, give a full opinion because it's like... It's so <laughs> it's like hold on, hold on. It I'm it's, still... It's been decided. It has been decided. And Two what, and three need to switch. No, Come, no way, dude. Yeah. I think this card's way yes. it can, Dude, it's like really popular. It's, it's so like sweet. Really, this card is sweet. It's, it's also really popular. Yeah. Does it have an anime it alt? Does. Show me. All right, then he it's also, fine. Didn't it he just replace a general? It's not like a deck was purposely built for him. It was already a deck that existed. Was there a double the other a, deck? Do is Alicia, is it, the other here? deck, and it's a completely different deck. Yeah, this deck is so much sweeter. Yeah, you can leave it there then. It's got an anime alt. You can keep it there. All right, so that's so my it's... requirement. Top eight legendary creatures, and Worship. again, one of the caveats I wanted to put on this was things that are unique that are either bringing or just like straight up upgrades. So like Shieldred, obviously just the bee's knees because not only just mono black decks want it, but every single deck that has black right just here. wants to punish it. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Isan, number three is Grease Fang. Number four is Giada. Number five is Anti Blights. Number six is the Beam Town Bullies, which should be our new podcast. Go to Beam Town Bullies. We just <laughs> do love that name. It's the, <laughs> so good. It's the best. Um, number seven is Hinata, and number eight is Soul of Wind Grace. Town bullies. It's so good. <laughs> Just guys, get out of here. All right. On get to, out of here. He's all the planeswalkers that came out this year. Um, Jesus. Yeah, it's not a lot, but um, okay. clear ones I'm going to grab right away. Minsk and Boo. Minsk, 100%. Yeah, boom. You better put him on there. I saw you float over him. <laughs> um, Who? Who do you think? Abby? Yeah. He's, he's, he's fine. Uh -huh. he, he comes. Top eight? Yes, he, dude, yeah. This year, this year was one of the worst years of Planeswalkers. It's just they were they were. Bu -bu 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 wait, wait, wait. Yeah, Where's um? At this list, I'm like, okay, all right, maybe you got a point. Here. These are all new ones, brand new ones. Brand new ones. Where's all the uh? Dude, these wandering Emperor. I, I missed that one. I'm gonna type it in. Wow, how did you miss the best one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's number, yeah. Uh, Argument. Uh, Minskin Boo is number one, but whatever. Wandering uh, Emperor. I, 
Can't believe you missed it. Urza's a tough one for me, and I'll, I'll move it over yeah. just because you need to have Meld, and that sucks. So you know that Mace Polarin for watching. being no, It's still like, better than all these other ones. Like the no comment for vomit. being unique. The rest of it is like literally vomit. I'm gonna both of over. those make everyone mad, vomit. and I am all about both of them. Well, we'll vomit. end up cutting one of these for the memes. I'm gonna get rid of Ashani. Dog crap. Giant yeah, dog crap. This is Marvish. the worst plans. Yep, horrible. Vomit. Garbage. <laughs> Bad. Not vomit. good. Bad. Not good. Vomit. Not good. Vomit. Bad. Not good. Oh, this, one's got, this one's simp vomit. <laughs> I'm moving over simp vomit. <laughs> not oh, good. Simping. Elmster. The, this, oh, card wait, was, hang on. this card's actually not so bad. It's sweet, but it's just... Vivian of the Hunt, remember how there was a combo deck for that for a second? Vomit. Garbage. Oh, wait, there was. All right, so that gets it on there. Garbage. Vomit. That Elspeth is played still in the standard. Nope. Okay, it makes it over to the top. We I see Kaito a list. lot. Kaito gets played a lot. Yeah, Kaito, Kaito is cool. Kaito is like playing uh, Pioneer occasionally. And he's got an anime alt art, so I'm, yep. I'm in. Vomit. This Teferi's <laughs> awful. This Aheli's awful. This Tezzeret is playable in EDH. And that's it. And this Elspeth. Okay. Vomit. Or he said for a second. One, two, so three, three, four, five, six, six seven, right eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so Minskabu number one. For sure. There's no no joke. Yeah, that, should be num- or the wander no wander or or this no two. the wanderer should be number one. I Minsk mean, and Boo would be all over standard and uh, modern, and, and if it was a lot for sure, I don't know. Dude, you are you uh, wander. The wander is in every format. I guess not anymore, every not anymore. format. Not anymore. Not online though, right? It got pushed. It's, I'm telling you, like the wandering emperor got pushed out. In what format? Legacy, and then it's barely. It's a. Bar- it's a. Bar- it's barely playable. It's also modern. not online, right? It's not um, it's not available online. No, it is. It, it is. It's like three hundred. It took over right. when it went online. Yeah, that's, that's why these cards were sleepers because just nobody was able to find it. Like they're just one of those things. Well, to, no one could play with it online, yeah. so you couldn't get a thousand games in. Yeah, to f- to rent it is a real B, but it it I, I kid you not, like any deck that was wanting to play Jace the Mind Sculptor in Legacy, replace it with Minsk and Boo, and their win percentages just went through the roof. Like being able to get a free one one every turn and sacking it for to draw five is so stupid. All right, so I next. Know, I still think it only it's it, it because of the where it was printed. It only sees play in one format versus a card that even if limited in legacy it still be, sees it be, play in like it can every. be your commander. Yeah, and how many how many decks play this commander? Check the stats. Zero, <laughs> I'm zero, saying zero. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. I'm going to put it over here. Dude, um, these are some sick legendary creatures. Yeah, they are. Thanks for the correction. Whatever whatever the order is, Obnixilis is three. I don't care what any of these Planeswalker creatures? You don't think you don't think Kaito's better? I guess Obnixilis is a little bit of play in Explorer. Obnixilis is better. Kaito also doesn't see play like in anything anymore, really. But. And then I put Kaito just because I do. People like him. That card's sweet. People dude. just like him. It's just it's I opened a, one in my box and I wasn't like terribly bad. upset about yeah. it. Yeah, they did something unique with this guy, and this, I, I guess they did something unique with all the Kamigawa. The ninja card. Well, they have three different planeswalkers. So Tezzeret, that one, and then or Kaito and the Wanderer, and they all have it like the static ability. They do something different where there was like a new planeswalker design that was actually not overpowered. Yeah, where they all were like, it's not like just. Copy yeah, it's paste. not. Yeah, it's not like here. Like, let me pull up Vivian. Like, this card is just like your standard planeswalker. It's it's here's three abilities. Blah. And this is like the, it had small. I cut. thought she was wearing a beret for a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna move Vivian over. So, to so space Balloon. I, I can't. I know you love the meme Ooh. of it, but this card is has, like, it's actually Ooh. really bad. It makes everyone hate you so, instantly. Card yeah. is yeah. I think I think Comet does a better yeah, version of that. Is actually kind of good. I'll take home. I'll give a shout out to this card. It's good in EDH. I think yeah, Comet comes in just because it did see play in Legacy for funsies. It's and like, so did upsetting. Okay. It's so upsetting to play against. And it, it really did okay. Was, yeah. It didn't do terribly. Yeah. Which okay. card? Uh, Comet. All right. Yeah, it's got, that, Comet. it's got the dice Space roller Balearin, deck where you just roll yeah. everything. Space Balearin should go. So Tezzer, yeah, it's got. Fine. It's great in like your EDH artifact decks it's just because activated abilities cost two less. And then it does stuff. Maybe this isn't that good. Hmm. I don't think it's that good. All right, well, how I, many do we need? Two, uh, four, Antonio's six, seven. We need one more. Standard with a, a Johnny Sleeper agent. Or is Urza better? Urza is definitely better, but the. Sorry, I just with... lost to that when I closed out the game from you guys I watching saw. me. I don't know, man. I have a real problem. Bring it in. Story. 
Uh, it's irritating because meld is so required, and it takes two cards to be one good card. I guess if the the actual the the but both the of the cards are good. Okay, that's like fine. to make him. I'll bring it over. I'll bring it over. I'm not bringing right, space player. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You can trash him. That's I just like him because he two. irritates the hell out of everyone. Yeah. I just think it's so funny that you didn't put the wandering emperor in your original list. Yeah, my bad. I just forget the best the best one. It's just forget really the good. best one in this in this list. Yeah. <laughs> the Wandering Emperor. Big and bold, let you know it's number one. Best believe it. Boom. All right. Minsk and Boo, I think, from a PowerPoint. You could. There's, is argue, way better. there's an argument for the Wanderer, but the only reason I say that is I've played a ton with the Wanderer, and I've been cutting it from a lot of my decks. Like, like modern. I play like a couple. I play like a two of. Legacy, it's like it was the thing, and then like. Initiative is the only white thing you should be doing. And then in modern, yeah. it's just everybody's back on Teferi Hero Dominaria. And yeah, that's fine. I don't care. I'm already in on it. You're good. You don't have to sell two. me. You have to sell the other two. On which one? The top two fight. I still... I mean, I don't, don't get me wrong. Like, it's it's a good card. I just... I don't know. I just... It, what, where it once was... When it first came out, I thought it was the best card in the format, and now it's I'm so far beyond that. I don't know. I mean, have you ever told sell you me there, it, sell me is Minsk it. is Minsk and Boo a four of? Well, it, the, so Minsk and Boo goes in like six different shells. Is the, the problem when you look at it? It goes in like four color shells. It goes in Naya shells. It goes in the dark depth shells. It's everywhere. And I have blue white right here, legacy blue white. Yeah, and it plays two of um. Minskimbu. Yeah. Oh, it, it's it's no, like Wandering Emperor. Oh, okay. Control? Yeah, Blue white I'm, control. I'm thinking of the four color control because they're also no, playing I'm not playing that garbage. Nice. But yeah, it plays two Wandering Emperor. Like and it never played more than that. I mean in modern you're playing two as well, and then in uh in Pioneer you're playing four just because it's the yeah. best thing you can be doing on it four. It does everything, man. It exiles. It, it does. Creatures, it I think buffs, it's a good like... card. Yeah. I mean, the only time I hate playing... Oh, he's bringing up the numbers. We said no numbers I just, today. I just, need, I, just, I just need to see like all the different okay. decks in. Question. Yeah. This is what rules on first or second. Is there an alt art for no. Minsk and Boo? There is. There is. It's yeah, just, there's a full art. It's a full art. Is there an anime alt art? No. It's <laughs> <Minsk and> Boo. <laughs> <Sorry>. Then get <laughs> it out of here. Number two. All right. If we're going from the anime, what makes two. it anime? Is the Wandering Emperor not like default anime? Kind, actually, kind of. I can I can move this here. It's fine. I'm okay Good. with this. Yeah. From the heart. We'll talk from the heart. I love the Wandering Emperor. I don't I play, care. I play with it a lot. That should play Minsk and Boo, and I don't care yeah, about it. Still hot on that card, but he's ultimately not that great. Yeah. Which card? Emperor. The Wandering Emperor. It's, it it's does solid. what you want it to at four. I'm gonna put the card does so much. It's played in aggro decks. It's played in control decks. It's played in mid range decks. Yeah, it's played in everything. All right, here's what we got for top eight planeswalkers. Number one, I'm just, fine by me. I'm just happy I've Nick's list made it. <laughs> he was gonna make it regardless. He was. Yeah. He was relevant. He wasn't gonna dodge it. The wandering emperor. Based on more... the other options, by far. Dude, Nick's this year was a bad year for planeswalkers because. Like, That's all right. good ah, you say that, but there's two really good ones on here that showed up in a lot of decks. Okay. Number one, Wandering Emperor. Number two, okay. Minsk and Boo. Number three, Obnix Liz. Number four, Vivian on the Hunt. Number five, Kaito. Number six, Comet. Number seven, Elmster. And number eight, Urza Planeswalker, which sneaks in by just cheating, but so be it. I mean, right. it feels bad because when you think about, what was it, two years ago, War of the Spark? Yeah. Uh, you know, you had like five planeswalkers that ended up playing in all formats for forever, oh, and like you that. still play them to this day. It's right. just like, a bunch oh, of them okay. got banned. Commander cards, uh -huh. guys. These are different from legendary, so you don't get to add that stuff. But is there anything here? Oh, man. Is there anything exciting here? Uh, Besage you. Gnome Terror Mancy. Besage you probably is number one. Honest to God. Besage is super good. Um, Ancient Copper Dragon. This one's like it's 40. Really this is like 40 bucks. 55 bucks dude the, these dragons is are nuts people love them they just love them yeah i mean they also love uh gold span just because it's such a good ramp card yeah all right not for you can refuse Meh. nothing all right um, i mean people play it it's easy removal for bloodthirster i don't even know what this card does don't care don't care 
Don't care. Baldur's Gate makes something you can do differently with a Gates deck. Uh, yeah, that's okay. You can in the woods. The super landfall nope, card. Garbage. Halo Get it out of here. Halo Get found. that out of here. Halo found I'm fine with. Just because it's a different alt win condition. Ask Josh. I, I beat him with that on his birthday. <laughs> that's not a good way to sell something, but. <laughs> um, what was sm- that, Josh? Smuggler's share. I was going to say the one. Do people play, play fair well? It. Gives yeah, you all yeah. the options. Yeah, it's a big it's one. Super it's super the best white, white removal EDA. So. It's it's like it's austere command on crack. Yeah, I would probably put that in. It's okay. like okay. because you have so many options and you don't have to choose everything. It's just like oh okay, I'll just take care of everything on the. Board. I'm gonna add the triumphs, the whole cycle of them. Sure. Because you're probably playing them. Yeah. Bad. Colors. Bad, is cool. bad. 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 Professional face breaker, the card that is degenerate with oh, treasures. Yeah, that's so gross. Yep, that's going on there. This goes with um, what's that stupid card everyone plays? The monkey. Yeah, Ragavan. No, the other one. Tox screen. This is like oh, that. That one. It's a goblin. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I forgot what this card does. Which one? I don't know, but it's not good enough if you can't remember. This is brand new. This is from the newest Urza decks, the Brothers War decks. Yeah. Target creature gets plus X plus X, X is the number of force you control, and then whenever it attacks, you make a 1 1. You know, Arbitrary. make it. Good idea. All right, all right. Smuggler's share. Uh, add that. Saw in half. I love this card. <laughs> this card is so good. It's sweet. I never saw it play anywhere, but I love it. It just makes Jeez. everything feel like Worm Coil Engine. Relic of Legends. Boo. Get that out of here. I don't know. Is this card any good? Oh man, people were talking this up so much. It's twenty five bucks because you can go and you know use your evolving wilds go get a Gaius Cradle. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna add it. But how many people do it? Calamity Wake is also gonna get added. Maybe I should be playing that. What am I doing? Yeah, Why you... is that not in my land stack? Cloud scan. Go fetch up my stupid. Um, Go fetch up my stupid strip mine every time and just start blowing. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I'm hustling. I'm hustling. Oh, I think this card's. Gosh, too. did we play EDH or was it Jeff? It was oh yeah, it was well, Jeff. It was me and you. Yeah, I made you feel miserable. Yep. That was good. All right, here we go. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> How do you guys feel about Micromancer? Mm. It goes and gets demonic consultation. Uh, also goes and gross. gets every tutor that you can get. Vamp, all of them. Uh, it's good. It's really good. It's annoying. Put it in there. It's a strong card. Haywire Being might... able to hunt for anything under your deck, get rid of Haywire Might. You don't think it's good enough? This is Exile. No. It's it's relevant. People already played the Cautious cal- Caterpillar, and they're replacing it with this. I guess. I mean, I, I can know. take it off. It's medium. Okay. It's I think it's movie. okay, but I don't think it does anything crazy. Like, it's not super bored and impactful. How do you feel about this this card? It's just another lord. But this one's just another draw. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. Okay. I'll cut it. It gets you a lot of. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing elves, like, you're like, oh, yeah, this is perfect. The anti anti combo card. Dude, this card is so good. Sweet. <clears throat> I mean. How many cards we got on the list right now? Uh, one, nine. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, Plays wow. graveyard removal. All right. Randy. See ya. Boulders Gate. That one can probably come off. It's only cute because it's something else to do with your gates. Yeah. It's, like, if you're actually the gate it's deck. Guy, it's like um, Shrine of Nyx for uh, the, the gates. Like yeah, yeah, it's for... good. It's a Cabal Coffers for gates. Okay, I think we take... The Sage is not coming off. That's not going Let's on. No, I know. Let's take Root Path off. Okay, see ya. How many decks are playing it? Yeah, How many? To bring up the stats. Okay. Well, this one's number one. I'm just going to keep calling for the stats. Call them! Call them! I'm putting the triumphs Get the at three. stats. Three. Everybody likes triumphs. Yeah. Maybe Boulder's Gate goes off. I don't know. It's not that good. And gates are kind of dead. Well, they, they they like reinvigorated them by making a bunch of them this year. Kind of. But well, not, like, yeah. dude, they made still a lot pretty floppy. You there's don't like, have to be a five color. Over 20. Yeah. You don't have to be a five color gate to play Maze Zen anymore. <laughs> That's what's nice. Um, I'm going to put Hall of Fountain at four. Dude, that card's so Sorry, good. Sorry, not four. So Micromancer. Five. Micromancer at five, six. Yeah, yeah, I like that card. Super good. 
four, five. Sod and half. I get think out of professional here. face breakers should be higher. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, more than willing to put it up there. I just know it's so stupid with Dockside because it draws a thousand cards. Um, I think it should be at least five, probably. Okay. You're telling you so fast with this. I do a lot of Excel at work. And yep, there you go. You made it in there, guy. Terramancer. Nice. Bada boom. There it is. Top eight cards for commander. Process elimination. He got there. Not not even close. Ancient Copper Dragon is the best of the cycle. That one's degenerate. Uh, the entire Triumph cycle, I know that's cheating. Number four is Farewell. Number five is Professional Facebreaker. Oh, number six cheating. is Micromancer. Number seven is Hollowed f or Halo Fountain. And then number eight is Deep Gnome Terramancer. Good year All right, for one. Question. All right. Before we move on to the next tab. Yes. Did we get any questions on that uh, yeah, Facebook we did. post? We did. I'm All right, let's do some of those. Okay, How many fine. we got? All right, well, I'm going to do a couple now. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Now you got to make me open up Facebook. I should have. I was about to say, let's just like kind of split it up. All right, whatever. The, All right. 300 <clears throat> top I, eights. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the first question I had is what do you guys oh, think the best format is, is format is and why is it vintage? It's not vintage because no one plays that. That's not what that guy said, but <laughs> that, that I mean, was... he does say it's the best. So he did ask, "Why is it vintage?" I said, "No, uh, okay." So, um, legacy. I have the most fun playing legacy because it's like I don't know. Best format's draft. Most the level fun. of professionalism is the best. Draft's the best format. Uh, Why? Um, equal playing field. If I don't have four that's grand. You. If I don't, have, well, yes. I mean, it's it's, but it's not get... always equal. Like that's the problem. What do you mean? Like, it's equal in that you open random packs, but like, your opponent can open like six mythics and you open six lands and you have nothing in your pool. You can yeah. have three mythics and then your opponent opens one mythic that is a giant yep. gorilla that gains. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I will say this there's a lot of draft games or games of draft that I've won. Like, my opponents played the Bomb Shieldred and I just happen to have removal for it. Yeah, they have yeah, made removal. They have made removal so much better than what it once was. Like back in the day, like, sure. if you go back to like M eleven, where it's like anybody opened a Titan here, like, oh, they auto that, won. That, that I was... mean, he does say it's the best. Yeah. So he did ask. Yeah, and the creatures are more impactful and all that, so it makes more interesting so, games because like, it used to be a lot of like here? board oh, stall stuff because you just sit there and wait until you had enough to overwhelm them. But now with the way that they do the creatures and like a lot of the ETBs and all that, it just makes it a lot more interesting every time you play. Here, I got an echo going on here. Creatures and like a lot of ETBs and all that. No, it's on me. It's on me. It's on me. Here, I got an echo going on here. Otherwise, not me. No, I mean, me. I get where you're coming from, but it still takes practice to get good at draft, and you have to kind of know the format in order to know what you're doing when you sit down. Kind of know the format in order to know what you're doing. There we go. There we go. I fixed it. God damn, I suck. Matt oh. Barrett said for commander. What about displacer kitten for commander? I did not add that one for commander, but that is a sleeper card. All right. So, um, anyways, go back to what you were saying. Well, I was just saying that. Um, you know, like, I get it, but at some point you can say that also practice makes perfect, so if you draft a set over and over, which means you have the money to draft over and over, you will get more practice and therefore will have a better advantage than anyone who has very little practice on it. You get the maximize limited. Like, so one of the things is when you start playing, like, constructive for the first time, you realize that, like, your pool of cards that you just opened from packs isn't enough and never is going to be enough, so you have to spend yeah. some amount of money, whereas, like I said... If you're willing to spend fifteen dollars a week at a local draft, you can do that indefinitely. You know, like there's no time, For and, sure. and you're not worried about things getting banned, rotating, so forth. I mean, I guess the format rotates, but it's a fresh format. Now we run into things where you run into like New Capanna, where that format is heinously bad. But you also get things like Kamigawa, or or even the Brothers War, or Dominary United. Like those, all those sets were awesome. But I always like draft because if you didn't have the money for like, like say. Today, I wanted to play Legacy, and there was not a proxy version. It's super hard to shell at $9,000 for a format that everybody's yeah. playing, whereas everybody can draft. Everybody can. Yeah, I get it. I, from that perspective, I understand, but I guess I'm more of a... Um, I suck at deck construction, I'll be real. Like, I'm just bad at it. Yeah. So, I cannot do, like, draft or sealed. I'm just bad. So, yeah. I get a lot of my fun out of playing constructed formats that have things that don't rotate very quickly which is why I usually gravitate towards modern or legacy. My yeah. typical is legacy just because I like the card depth Rotate. and the options for 
different styles of decks that you can have. And I mean, like, you even look, you know, people are like, oh, yeah, aggro other than blue red is dead. And then all of a sudden, sure, it's new cards, but like you have initiative that came out of nowhere that uses a bunch of old cards that people have had for a while, you know, like City of Traders, Ancient Tombs, all that. (laughs) Uh, you know, some yeah, of the mana, who'd have thought? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's the thing is, like, you build your mana base, right? Isn't that what people used to advocate for yeah. in every single format? Is, like, build your mana base, then buy the cards. Yep, yep. Yeah, because you can play anything if you have the mana base. Yep. And, like, sure, you're still going to have to shell out 100 bucks for, you know, a play set of whatever. Um, you know, whatever is, like, the good key card in there. But, like, for the most part, as long as you have the lands, you can play whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, it's kind of the same for like, well, no, I shouldn't say that for modern. It's, it's, it's kind of like that, but, uh, for legacy, you're still, you know, you have your moxes, you know, mox diamonds or your guys cradles or yep. your whatever that, that costs like a bajillion dollars. Right. So, so hmm. that's a well thought out answer. answer. I'm going to defer this next question to Josh. <laughs> what is the meaning of life? <laughs> <laughs> he says is he shucking um, peanuts huh okay <laughs> what did he say i forget it wasn't it wasn't substantial so we'll go from there um and then alex thompson who was actually on the cast uh before asked how many how many minutes was the five color minute this year <laughs> <laughs> oh um, man i think we did it it's got to be at least half the year we had it. No, we did not do it. You were gone for some episodes. We skipped it if we didn't have anything. I swear to God, it's at least like... I want to say 20 minutes to 25 Yeah, minutes. I was about to say 20 to 25 yeah. for sure. I would be flabbergasted. close to half. Because you quit. Well, not you quit. It just became different. It just became different. Yeah, it became not the same, so I stopped talking about it. Matt, But Bar- that was pretty recent. Matt Bartit, Bart, Bart, Barrett. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. Says I live in Southeast Queensland, Australia, and Commander is the most played format. All right, <laughs> Matt, if is. you're willing to get on the show after, I got some questions about Australia for you, bud. <laughs> in the after show, do the toilets flush in reverse? Yes, I need to. Well, how would he know? Because they would be the right way for him. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> All right. Um, that was then, a terrible accent. Yeah, yeah was, I'm sorry. I'm sick. Awful. I'm nasally. I'm all screwed up, guys. All right. And then a buddy, uh, one of the fans of our cast, uh, Tyler Adams, says, what would it take to fix competitive paper play? Um, he lists. An, competitive uh, what? Competitive paper play. paper play. The reduction of power. What's wrong with it? It should come out with that one thing. What is it called? The DCI? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that thing coming back. I mean, I think we've we've touched on this a couple of times. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is you're right in right. that standard and draft should be the main F and M formats. Well, that's not competitive. Much... That's not competitive play. That's like F, that's your store play. But that's what I'm saying is it builds into the competitive scene, yeah. which then drives people to want to go to big tournaments. And you know they're kind of starting to do it right now by having you know seasons or whatever. They're, well, they're where... not seasons. They're they're like go on, go on, go on. But where, you know, you have a couple of different formats and they have the laid out formats of these three things are the ones that we're going to be doing yeah. and whatever we want to do for this, this, you know, season is the one that we're going to be doing. Yeah. All right. What's wrong with competitive play? Right now? Um, well, when we go to, when there's RCQs that have less than eight people, that's problematic, meaning that there is no interest in it. So... That's, that's... So if you were to ask me, the problem is the game is unaffordable, or that the game hasn't have it hasn't piqued people's interest, or that the outreach isn't as great as people think it is. Well, I, I got a lot of those enfranchised players or sixty card players have felt that they've been pushed out, right? Like it's all like mm-hmm. commander focused, commander focused, and they're like, okay, this game is no longer for me. So I guess I mean to what you're saying, Josh, is you're right. It's it's super commander driven now and as far as eternal modern pioneer and standard goes that is a thing of the past maybe they're trying to translate those to online play but again they've lost a lot of that um along the way and And i think that's the most interesting thing is you see people cropping up in big groups locally like you see here where it's like all of a sudden we have a real drive for legacy we have like 30 people yeah we legit have a ton of people coming to play legacy there's like people every week who are just sitting around Yep. Waiting to play more Legacy. Yep. There's there, that drive for sixty card players exists. You used to have to cultivate it. Well, and it takes work. Yeah. 
I think the biggest change it can make, and I reiterated this in an earlier episode, is just legit bring seasons. Not like in the way that Agreed, you're saying. Rotate. Yeah, so it's like summer would be modern, spring would be limited, and pioneer. then oh, pioneer, and then you could do winter would be the new whatever, or standard. fall could be standard because that's when it rotates, and then you could do winter as limited. So you would do mm-hmm. those four things. So even if you didn't have the money, at least two of the four seasons you could play because standard is fairly cheap. And with a rotation, things kind of stay at a low amount. And then also you have a sealed thing. Also, when you start getting your foot into the door, when you miss on it, like you just barely made, made it or you missed the mark, it drives you to try it for the next season. And then you might actually pony up for Modern or or, or Pioneer. So mm-hmm. that's kind of like the NRG where you see people running in with, with decks borrowed from people in the old school way. Yep. Like yep. just finding people to piece out decks. You'd get everybody back from there. But that's that's where I think that needs to be done. Okay. Back to list, baby. Boom. Um, sure. I don't really have a top eight Tony here. Tony was waiting. Cards that died this year. Um, I'm going to just list them off because I think there's – I have two, four – I have seven total, which number one, RIP Yorion. Um, got kicked out of Modern. and along Messed with, up a lot of decks. Getting kicked out, kicked cards out like Abundant Growth. You don't need to play that anymore because all the decks are back down to 60. Uh, Luris got kicked out of the beginning of the year um, after Kamigawa. Did you play Mill again? You can try. It's just, you can try. You can try. It's just not going to do anything. Ragavan got kicked out of Legacy. Uh, Death Shadow is just not a thing because of Solitude. It just, you just, with Solitude being on the absolute rise, you can't play any uh, uh, Grixis Shadow deck. Also, that died along with Luris. Jason Solitude Lyons, on the rise or on the fall? Because I hear both. It's up and down, but the I think the biggest problem with Death Shadow is just, just Prismatic Ending has just been so relevant everywhere. And if you're going to play like a combo deck like that, you might as well just play Colossal Hammers and just hit people in the head with them. Mm-hmm. Bonk, J- bonk. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Dude, just if you, I, I want to play this card so bad because I have such a great memory, a fond memories of it. The card's miserable. Just sucks. That's every the format. biggest loss this year is Jace the Mind Sculptor. <laughs> Seriously, dude. I can't play it bury anywhere. Him. Bury him. Just bury him, dude. I know. Just, mm-hmm. Put it's, him in a box and forget about him. They've printed remember a- when he was yeah. banned in Modern? Yeah, I remember. Oh, that's so crazy. He was banned in modern and it was a hundred dollars. I think he's about four he still 50. holds he still holds a price tag somehow. Is I really don't know why. Well he's me. just a name. It's a known card. That's fair. It's kinda like Tarmogoyf will never drop. Well Tarmogoyf's like what twenty bucks. Yeah. That's Tarmogoyf's what I mean. Like it'll never it'll dollars. never completely Oh sure, die. sure, sure. <laughs> okay. I mean, maybe. And then Mother of Ruins, um sorry. They have a there's a much better mono white deck now in Legacy and that Yep. Is, <laughs> the only place to play it. So an initiative goes. Hey, you know away. where Blue Ruins is still really good. Uh, pre-modern. pre-modern, yeah, it's really good in pre-modern. Pre-modern, sweet. Um, that's all I got. I couldn't think of an eighth card at the time, but I also ran out of research time. So, all right, here we go. A, Wait, hold on. I know what died. Okay. Is this a dinner number eight. Or... This is number eight. Is um, Pizza Ranch. What what <laughs> took um what con- took Consider's place? It's called Thought Scar. Thought, Thought Scar is gone. Done. No, that was last year. No, that was this year. No, nope. Consider came out twenty twenty one. Did yeah, it? it was. Oh. Wait, what set was it in? It was in the Wolf set. Uh, really? Yeah, that was last year. Yeah, because wow. there's a black okay. and white version of it. it came My bad. Say, when did Luris get banned? It got banned after Kamigawa because you were able to play Lion Sash with it. Yeah. So yeah, wouldn't that be the eighth card to die? It did. Die. It was on there. It was on there. Oh, it was on there. It was number it was two. The first two, one and two, are both both companions. They're dead. Okay. All right. Best to worst mechanics. Um, there's a bunch of them this year. We have reconfigure, blitz, casualty, alliance, connives, shield counters, the initiative, choose the background, enlist. Uh, initiative number one. No prototype. We're and not even gonna it... go through the rest of this list. You already know. Okay, I'll put initiative. Is the is it the best or the worst mechanic? I'm not talking it's about parlor. Okay, okay, it's the best. All right. Made a whole new deck. From there, it's got to be. No, it didn't it improve the deck? No. It made a deck. Well, it's it's a whole thing on itself. Um, it became a deck. What do you feel yeah. about? I mean, choose the backgrounds with the stains. I hate that mechanic. It just sucks. <laughs> Dude, it's so. Good. It's the worst. <laughs> it's so unfun. It's so good. Uh, Enlist is really Can bad. Knives really good. It's just a better version of um, making power stones. It's just it's just a making power stones. It's I'm gonna put it <laughs> here somewhere. Shield counter. Pretty Field counter's cool. It's yeah, not I good, but I like it. Okay. Alliance is just ETB. I hate that. 
Let's just get that out of here. Okay. Casualty. I don't even remember what this one is. Where you can sack a creature. And then you like double the effect. It. Yeah. Uh there's only one card with Make Disappear. That really, yeah, Make, that yeah, gets played. yeah, so. Blitz. That one's pretty good because you see it in Tenacious Underdog all the time. Put it here. What about Prototype? Do you guys like this? I like it. This is just don't. their... Isn't this just an excuse not to be a flip card? Yes. <laughs> okay. And it's also, again, only like two cards that have Prototype really see play. Yeah. Matt... Barrett, you're right. Backgrounds could be going to pay more options, but they just suck. They're just so un uninspiring. Next year is going to be whatever commander set they're going to. It's not going to be enchantment based. It's going to be they're going to call it like totem, where you what put is, an artifact somewhere. What is the effect going to be in Modern Horizons three trip to Mordor? Um, the ring. I don't know. What's do you, the fellowship? I yeah. guess feel about reconfigure, which is just <laughs> artifact creatures that turn into equipment. I didn't think it was that great. Okay, it's okay. I like Lion Sash. That's Lion the Sash. Only one. Well, the other one, sure, the uh, the blue one, the blue one, the memory. We're chip. talking about what we like. Okay, choose right. the background. Is for these these three well, right we're here. We're talking not about what we like, but what's best to worst. Yeah, the initiative is the best. Can I have number two? And then, I guess I could put reconfigure at number three because I do see people play the uh, what's the blue one, the memory chip in Legacy. Yeah, yeah that one, memory chip's cool too. Shield counter blitz, making a power stone. They just tack that onto everything. It's good and limited, isn't it? Prototype is probably better than this. No, it's, yeah. it's... casualty. This is how I feel about it. Choose a background was the absolute worst this year. <laughs> I mean, I have no say in anything beyond. It, it is prototype. so horrendous. Like, just the worst. It was like, we'll make monocolored generals, but you have to choose a background that uses another color. It's like, okay, they all suck. What anyway. set was the one that makes. Um... Your opponents have to attack. Good. That's old. Is it? That's, okay. yeah, that's, that's like that's from uh, conspiracy, I think. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah it's oh, super man. old. Yeah, it's a multiplayer. I mean, I only knew it because of the um, the more recent cards that right. had it. That's what we got. Boom. Initiative is the best, just because it's just so overpowering in Legacy, and then all, it's the, also the worst at the same time because no one plays it in Commander. Um, Kanai's yeah. great in multiple formats. One of those free loot effects. Um. Reconfigure, which is the equipment creature thing, which is kind of nice. Uh, Shield Connor, which is meh. Blitz is Tenacious Underdog. Um, prototype. It, this is it. It's only Tenacious Underdog. It really is. Like, there's other cards that have Blitz, but the only one that I ever see the is... Rhino sees play occasionally in yeah. like, sideboards, but that's about it. Yeah, it's medium at best. A prototype, which is probably something that will get better as we go. Um, making a Power Stone, which is just like tacked onto a bunch of cards that just like this is lightning bolt but also makes a power stone uh casualty x literally one card that gets played alliance which is just the ally ability but you don't have to be an ally anymore i hate it yep uh enlist which is who this is a bad one because you can't enlist things that have summoning sickness they made it so this was one uh, wasn't degenerate in draft and lastly choose a background all right Super terrible. Top eight sleepers. Pretty easy. Um, these are cards that when they first came out, nobody thought anything of them. Um, and I'll be honest, I think Shield was number one because we all were like, this is at least oh, from. I our, thought it was terrible. At everybody, first. everybody thought it was just like a bad card. It's like, what are you going to do? And then it's obviously just rampaging every format. I don't know, man. I think White Plume might be argument. I'm going to put White Plume. Argumentative of it. Um, like the Dungeoneer, all those together, like the initiative in general, it, people are just like, what is this dumb garbage? It is really bad. I mean, I guess. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to move that. To I also number. think people, I don't think. Put that uh, in number Ledger two. Shredder should be up there. Yeah, I don't think so either. Okay. I thought Shredder was like known. That was like three bucks from the get go and then it became 30. Nah, everyone was, everyone was talking about it. Okay. Uh, Fable, that one we all thought was bad kiki jiki. Yep. Turned out to be I was nut. like, oh man, what are you going to do with this? Minsk and, and Boo. people were like, Check same thing. This out. Leyline Binding. Um, it was literally the only card. This Not good in Legacy, good in Modern, though. Yeah. Um, Touch of the Spirit Realm. This is getting seen played because it has Channel, and Channel's really annoying. Tashimi. I'd put. Meh. Displacer I'd put the Displacer in there for sure. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, man, Tony is ripping through these. Well, there's not a lot to say because usually it's like these are the top four cards right here. Like yeah, Shieldred, and then everything White else Plume. is kind of like eh. 
Yeah, Leyline Binding, Displacer, Tashimi. The only thing I could say would be like you cut Tashimi and put Rafine in there because everybody thought this card was going to be like medium. It's actually super dominant and standard, but it's not good anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, it. that's a good reason to punt it, right? I'm going to punt yeah. it. This is actually getting played in Modern and Legacy. Tashimi? So no, Touch of the touch Spirit Realm. I know, but you said Tashimi was like, eh. It's still a combo deck. It's like, okay. It exists, and it's one of those cards that you have to pay attention to. Any zero man artifact that they make degenerate, it can go. I right. guess. But Shielded number yeah. one for stop eight sleepers. Number two is White Plume slash the Season Dungeoneer, the same card to me. Uh, Fable the Mirror Breaker, everybody slept on this card, didn't think anything of it. Minsk and Boo had the same effect where it came out and nobody talked about it. Um, Leyline Binding, Displacer Kitten, or Kitten, Tashimi, and our Fable. Tami- Am I saying it's not Tashimi? I'm saying it so wrong. It's Tamishi. Tamishi, yeah, Tamishi, and then Touch of the Spear Low. Miro for Commander, or Myro for Commander. That card was, everybody knew that card was good. Sorry, someone's saying in the comment. All right, the last of our top eights. Boom, boom, Look boom. All right, dude. What the hell? Yeah, so I'm going to put Karn uh, up here. Really? <laughs> dude, that card was such a bad rate, and it's like, whatever. I'm going to put Comic Pup just because it's confusing as hell. No, right. it's not that confusing. So this card's stupid. It's got 15 mana. <laughs> and the, so this from a design standpoint I didn't even know sucks. this exists. Well, it sucks. Because yeah. this spell costs X less, which X is the total number of value of dragons you control. So it's like... Sure, so if you have really two true. dragons, but it's you like only, free. you only get a 10-10 out of it. It's not even... A, it's 15 mana for just trash. 10 10 flying Free 10 10. <laughs> it's not free. You have to have like 13 mana worth of permanence. Free. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to put this on here too. The really, 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 really bad yeah. version of yeah. They just made this card so like we don't want to make two cyclonic rifts. I don't understand. Why does that card exist? Exchange of words. <laughs> oh, I love that card. <laughs> that card goes on there. Yeah, evolving door. I forgot. I got to put it into my legacy super, deck. Someone super, super bad. One. The worst version they've ever made of birthing pod, and it doesn't even work. Yep. Bounty color, sacrifice creature, then search a library for a creature that's exactly that many colors, plus one. Exile that card, then shuffle. You may cast the exiled card. What? You, have to, you don't even get it to put into play? You have to cast yeah, it? Yeah, you have to pay Yeah, you have to pay <laughs> mana for it. so That's bad. awful. Yeah. So I put it on the Earthquake Dragon. Get out of here. Get that out of there. Call to the Void. I'm not reading that again. Yeah, get that out of there. <laughs> Chaotic Transformation. It's basically you and your opponent flip their decks upside down and see who's going to win. That's uh, don't put that in there. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> Thanks for telling me that exists. I'm gonna put it in my deck. <laughs> Weatherlight like completed. This should yeah, not be mythic. Was, what the hell? <laughs> it's a five five vehicle. I don't with understand. No, no crew cost. Yeah, I love it. I still don't understand it. It's just really bad quest for the um, the undead, whatever the Lord of the Undead, whatever his name is. Uh, there's a lo- there's a lot of space. Bur- but I'm not gonna put space bur- blaring on there, dude. I don't know, man. That's way more confusing than comment. What about this card? At the beginning of your end step, choose a target permanent card in your graveyard. You may sacrifice a permanent that shares a type with it with the chosen card. If you do, return the other card. So essentially, you're just switching cards. You swap them out at, at random. And then if it leaves the battlefield, you exile it. Yeah. No, not at random. I thought it was at random. No, you pick a target permanent. So if you got a land in there and you put you want it on the battlefield, okay, okay, you choose not, a land I on the battlefield. I read that wrong. It's fine. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> Oh my that god. That card was a like what the hell? Oh, it's just like what? why Hold would... on. I got to read this. <laughs> total is less than your starting life total. This spell costs less than that where X is the So it's like if you uh, have 7 life, it costs black black for a 7/7. Seven, seven. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's um super bad death shadow. Yeah, death shadow. But it doesn't even have flying with the photo it looks like it's flying. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that. It's just bad. What does this card do? Destroy each color that isn't all colors. Eh, okay. That's fine. Yeah, it's, there's nothing too crazy about it. It's a bard wipe. Oh, this is the card I was talking this about. This card is trash. So okay, this card. What does this say? It's, it's a ninja. Exile target card other than a basic land card from opponent's graveyard. Search that player's graveyard hand and library for any number of cards with the same name as that card and exile them. Then that player shuffles for as long as you control that. You may play one of the exiled cards and you may spend mana. What's wrong with this? You so just steal one on, of their cards. Hold on. It's a legendary creature. So even if it's yep. your commander, they only have one of. So you're never going to do anything but exile a thing, right? Sure. 
Number two, it's a ninja without ninjutsu. This effect would be great with yeah, n- ninjutsu. Yeah, terrible part. All right, but it's a five mana four four that has yeah, to connect. That's a bit weird. Or sorry, it's it's just it's really 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 bad. <laughs> it's just I don't understand this card. Just because it doesn't, just because it's bad doesn't mean it. Well, it's, it's what it's, the it, hell. It, it is what the hell because it's the ninja without ninjutsu. Yeah, I still like, think how my do you favorite have ninja without ninjutsu, bro. I still think my favorite what the hell card is icy cauldron. I love making uh, people read that card. That's a tough one. What about this one? Obscura Ascendancy. Whenever you cast a spell, if it's man of value, it was one plus the number of soul counters on Obscura Pounder. Oh it. my god. <laughs> yeah, that card's terrible. <laughs> what the hell? There's like six effects happening at once. <laughs> and you have, to do it. you have to do it as one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and then and then you make creatures, and then if you have five on there, then all those creatures get plus three, plus three. Clint, you were right. But it has to be... Yeah. The next tier spell. What about this one? This absolute word, meeting of the five. Dude, this card was so <laughs> underwhelming. I mean, there's nothing what the hell about well, it. You, no, it is. It's exile well, the top ten did. cards of your library. You make cast spells that, cast that, are, that, that are exactly three colors from among them. And then add, I get it. Add ten it's mana. It's like a worse version of, um, what's the name of that? You uh, can't even cast an ultimatum with this. It. No, 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 you can't even yeah. cast. You can't even cast an ultimatum with this because you don't. You need three of a pip for one. Two, of them. Yeah, three, two, <laughs> two. This card was, it's a mythic. Okay, this is like this is the bulkiest bulk of mythics. Not only does your Not entire deck, all, your Blitz's entire mirror is a better bulk mythic. No, Blitz's no, mirror will play. There's I'd rather a combo play Blitz's that. mirror. Over There's this. a combo you can yeah. win with Blitz's mirror. Blitz's <laughs> mirror also saw play in standard for a while. You can give that to Blitz's mirror was so cool. You can give that to your opponent. It's the best. All these myogens, these all the, the myogens, they made five of these. Not a single one is worth dick. Yeah, whatever. I okay. mean, it's not what the hell. It's just a, it's a Bad cycle card. that didn't do well. Um, how about this one? A five mana. This card, <laughs> just five. Yeah, that's fine. Why does it have unearth on it? Man, explain <laughs> to me. Understand the unearth. <laughs> Meeting the five. I do love unearth two green. <laughs> like, what, what is this design? What do you do? Well, if you throw it in there with life from loam, you can cast it from the graveyard and get back some of the lands uh, that you're gonna get back from oh, life okay. from loam, right. anyways. All right. What is this one? Collision of the realms. I have for you. Each player shuffles all creatures they own into their libraries. Each player shuffles their non-token creature. They reveal cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card and then put the rest on the board. Okay, that's not even that good. I thought it was way better. It's nope. not confusing. Just right. flip a creature. Arcane Wipe bombard- the board, flip a creature. Arcade, ar- arcane bombardment. Bombardment. Whenever you cast the first instant sorcery spell each turn, exile a card at random, and then you may cast it. Okay, I mean, it's not that crazy. I like that. It's good. Okay. Leave it alone. Plaza of Heroes. Leave it alone. Add one mana of any card. Only to cast. Yeah, no, it's, it's not what the hell. You just get to cast. It's it's the, what did I think about this one? Inch of the Battlefield, Scry 3. Each spell you cast for exactly three colors has Replicate 3. It, what? Why? Oh, because <laughs> of the stop and go like yeah, This is so please. awful. What like, the, the hell? The theming is terrible, <laughs> but I like the card. <sighs> Better be playing... That has uh, to be on the list. Tribal three drop, three <laughs> cost. Uh, this has got Scry three. <laughs> Replicate three. I like it. Okay, okay. It's awful. No, you don't. I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna make a three cost EDH. It's only One, three cost. One, two, three. Okay, Karn shouldn't be on a... here because it's just. I thought it was just so bad. Yeah, no, it is. So what bad. the hell? Okay. Why? Oh, what makes it hard? It's not about it, it's hard, but like this card, so like ev- everything about it, like just it's in it's like a pre- it's a precursor to like here's the next that's gonna have power stones, and then it, all of its abilities are really underwhelming, just so underwhelming. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, I guess. This card get comet out of there. Comet's not that. And confusing. what the hell doesn't have to always mean confusing? What the hell could be like? Like what why, was this design? What was this? Yeah. Design? Like why evolving, is this like bad? like evolving door. It's like why did you guys? You guys wanted to make sure that Birth and Bot was. This card was so far removed that from That card Bob. stays on this list. That it, card is so bad <laughs> and so not. Like, right. why would you make this card? Here are cards I know I want for sure. I want Weatherlight completed. Weatherlight, want... Evolving Door. Shot, uh, Comet sh- is fine because it's just like I'm 20, different yeah. 20 different effects. 20 different effects from rolling dice. Well, that's why it's that's everybody fine. Hates it. Okay. That's fine. Really, really bad version of that. Exchanging of words. Meeting of five. Meeting of five. Obscure Ascendancy, Meeting of the five. I can get rid of this. Yeah, perennial behemoth is funny, but it's. How do you feel about the signal card? 
Ah, I <laughs> that you so guys bad. seem to be mad about it. So six, seven, eight, nine. I have ten here. So we gotta let's put the things out. We're gonna know. It's gonna be. I think number one is either meeting of the five or evolving. It's meeting of the five. five. It's meeting of the five. <laughs> I don't care what you say. And then card is so number bad. Two. <laughs> it's the worst card. It's the number one. Like you made this mythic. You can't even do anything with it because uh, that side is full of like model colored cards. So even if you do it, you have to hit a three color card, and then also it exiles the top ten cards of your library. You're gonna mill yourself before you get to do anything. I'm making the argument that exchange of words is the number two, because oh. the amount of like messed up board states that this makes yeah, is insane. It's like sometimes it's just like, all right. I'll, can I, you I, give I, a blue creature pro blue? So this card, yes. if you were going to cast this card, they should have just made this birthing pod, but except you have to cast it. instead of it, it has to be... So if you do a, a Rakdos card, you can only upgrade it to another Rakdos card. Like, it's so stupid. Eh. Bad. Okay. All right. Bad, okay. I think, All right, put Karn up there. Put your Karn up there. I know you want it. I don't know yet. We'll get to it. Uh, it better be. What about the Obscure Ascendancy? You think, There's a lot yeah, of words. I don't like it. <laughs> If I'm someone played it on me, I'd just tell them, okay, go ahead. Whether I completed it, I like over there too, just because it's stupid. Yes. Like, okay. So we have five. Jeff, eight. how do you feel about Comet? Man, I don't think it's that difficult. I think it should be towards the bottom. I'm you just think it should be I, on there I, at I, all. I'm just surprised. Oh, that, no. Yeah. I'm surprised okay, this is just not an eight. Forward. I thought this card was going to be an acorn card, but that's, that's really all. I can't get rid of Comet. It's not that confusing. Well, I hope someone brings it to Legacy this Friday. That, that'll be there. They've been talking about it. Karn, okay. It's either Shadow Mortality, which is just horrible design. Hercules Final Meditation, horrible design. So Hercules, why do you want it on there? So this Heroic card, card, it costs it's seven mana to do it on your turn, and then you basically pick everything up and then end the turn. And then it costs ten On your mana. turn, or yeah. ten yeah. on their it's, turn. It's just like a really underpowered card. That's all. It also hits your permanence. Like Cyclonic Rift, you would never do this... Instead of, like, I don't know who this is for. It's also triple blue. Like, don't get me wrong. Cyclonic Rift was a bad, like, design because it's just the bane of EDH. Because it's just, like, at the end of that guy's turn, I'll Cyclonic Rift and I'll win the game. Whereas this card is, yeah. like, a, a, like a protective. So yeah. It, it really is, like, one of those cards that just a complete, like, remember that post I made the other day about, like, what are some of the house rules that you've run into? It's like Cyclonic Rifts is one of the cards like no Cyclonic Rifts here because it's just all eye rolls. Yep. And I this, can understand that. Though. And this card is just like so in the other direction of being that bad. Like 10 mana? Come on. Eh. I yeah. Said, I said my piece about it's it. It's pretty bad. I'm putting Shadow up here. Two Ledger Shredders. You really want Shadow on there? Dude, like what? 15 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. And like even when it's cheap, it's a black black 7-7. Seven, that seven. It that sucks. dragon is better than this. Yeah, this card the green sucks. One. Yeah, this, card, this card sucks. I mean, we could... I'm putting the three-fold signal on here. Why? Because <laughs> you have to have exactly three colors. No, you don't. It says each yeah, spell you, you cast oh, has yeah. exactly three colors. Oh, has this is terrible. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I'm not playing awful, that. Bro. I thought it was three mana. Each no, 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 no. that no. it costs three mana well, yeah, gave you... you that thing. I was like, oh, that's cool. No, oh, it's, <laughs> it's super bad. You just pay three, six, nine, and you triple it? Yeah. Okay. Three, six. Damn. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's between Karn. I can take I mean, the shadow. We'll just, people oh. were very upset about Karn. It's either because they is. wanted it to be good. They heard Karn was coming, and then it was just terrible. It was the worst. And he's also. Karn is ever he, and is, it was like, it was he, the is, flagship is, card, too. They've always, this is how they've always judged Karns. If Karn has pants, it's bad. If he doesn't have pants, it's good. <laughs> That's is that how it works. Yep, every Karn here. Original Karn didn't have pants, and he was good. That's no, what no pants. Saying. No, great Karn. Oh, no pants is good. Great Karn. No pants. Awesome. Every time they add pants to this guy, he gets way worse. <laughs> bad Karn. Bad Karn. Oh, people played Karn and Cyan. Or Cyan Zyan, was played it? a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it was played, but it also it was bad Karn because it has pants. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. Anyways. All right, number one. Rules again. Well, number one, all right, the top eight worst cards are the what the hell cards, meaning that they just, like, what was this design and so forth. Meaning of the five, exchange of words, number two. Number three is evolving door. Number four is obscure ascendancy. Number five is what like completed. Number six, shadow of mortality. Number seven, threefold signal. Look that one up. And number eight, Karn living legacy. That one up. <clears throat> all right, last thing, card of the year. 
card of the year. The paper player card of the year. Card. Yeah. I vote Kiki Jiki. Um, sorry, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I think that's the card of the year. I really do. Of Nexus. Nope. Get out of here. <laughs> you can't even sell me. You I can't even think. Sell- I I still think it's the Wanderer, bro, over Kiki. You're crazy. No. I like I the uh, Atawaru, the blue land. That one is good. It could be Beseju. I could I could be in for Why that, too. Why don't we each pick our personal favorite of the year? No. Well, look, fine. I, I'm telling you mine is going to be Kiki Jiki. Uh, sorry. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay. I think that's the card of the year. So, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Tony. Yep. That's his. Yep. Jeff. Uh, better be the same the, thing or I'm going to be pissed. One of the lightning bolts that were printed. No, no, no. New cards of 2022. <laughs> the Wanderer. It's the Wandering. The wandering. Oh, okay, the okay wandering put the Wandering Emperor. Emperor. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Josh, you got one? Uh, Josh, what's your fave? He might like Ledger Shredder the best. What's your number one? He doesn't like Ledger Shredder. He's Otawaru? Otawaru is a great one. JB, it's got to be Besaidu for you because you love lands. No, dude. It's, it's Wanderer. I mean... It's gonna be weird. But Actually, I'm gonna say... hold up. Sorry, it's not the Wanderer. I can't believe it. It's Grease Fang. I was about to say it's Grease it's Fang because it got me to play. <laughs> it got me to play Pioneer. Oh. Dude, Grease Fang is insane. Oh, it got Tony me to play Hose. Pioneer. Yeah, that's fair. All right, I wouldn't be playing otherwise. Well, I might be playing Blue. Actually, you know, what? put it. Put me for the Wanderer. Oh, the Wanderer. Anime. Anime. Because I'd be playing. Um, I'd be playing. I'd be playing Pioneer Blue White if I was. If I didn't have Grease Fang. All right. Yeah, which and means that plays Fang. four of them. All right. And Anybody that, in the chat? That means Grease Fang is something you like more because you're playing it. You have blue white for Pioneer, but you're still choosing to play Grease Fang. So top four cards of the year. I mean, they don't. They could have been the same. We could have been top All right, three. Pick Grease Fang. Put it on there. Yeah. Grease Fang yeah. Grease Fang's sweet. It's sweet. Fang. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's gonna be it for the show. Um, I do have one question for you guys. I don't. I think it was last year. I made a goal of trying to build one of every hey, format. Question. Yep. Why don't we talk about what kind of magic we played? I played a cool format that no one's playing. What? <laughs> magic? Yeah, Dan Dan. It was great. We played What's Dan Dan. So there's a card called Dan Dan. It is a four one for two blue. And it says if your opponent doesn't control any islands, you can't attack, and if you don't control any islands, you have to sacrifice it. Is it Dan Dan? Yep. It's one word, Dan Dan. I think I know what this card is. I've seen it before. So it's you, awful. it's a deck that has 10 of these in there. And then you have, I think it's eight memory lapses. Is that the one that puts it on your top of your deck? Yep. Yeah. And then you have a bunch of cards that, and then four accumulated knowledges and two ofs of a bunch of cards that manipulate the deck. Yep. The top deck. And also cards that uh, change islands into not islands. So you can destroy their Dan Dan's? I like it. It's like a battleship. Yep, so you just like sit around playing mind games with one another and trying to mess with the top deck so your opponent draws... The... You play off the same deck, so you're trying to mess with their top deck sure. constantly. <laughs> so you're just constantly like messing around. It's a great format. It's a lot of fun. And you gotta like sit there and think for a second because you need to figure out like, well, if they play their memory lapse to put this garbage card on while I'm trying to draw cards yeah. and I counter something... Then how am I gonna stop this? Uh, like how I'm, I'm gonna draw nothing but trash. <laughs> so, uh, I definitely at one point played a what's the land that puts the island that puts a card on top? There's a land that does that. The island, the uh, the one that's played in Legacy. Oduwara? Oh, uh, the combo Is... one with submerge. No, the land. There's a land that puts something on top the of your. I can't think of the name of it. It was oh, like banned in modern. Mystic Sanctuary. Mystic Sanctuary. Yeah, yeah Mystic go. Sanctuary. Yeah, I definitely at one point played a Mystic Sanctuary, put a piece of trash card on top so he couldn't stop my Dandan from beating him. Yeah. Just like, here, have this counter card that won't do anything for you. That's pretty funny. <laughs> it sounds like a ridiculous format, but again, I love that there's a million different ways to play Magic. Which I'm can't... really excited because I convinced the guy who has it built to put in uh, foil, which is return oh, three yes. islands, counter a card. Thort, so if Thort, they have a Dan Thort. Dan that's about to go to combat, you just play a card, counter, pick up all your islands, and then he can't attack. Yeah, I think that's... Foil is no, this card no, in he's thinking of Thwart. Oh, I'm thinking oh. of Thwart. Yeah, yeah Thwart yeah. is the card. Thwart. All right, but It's going to be so good. All right, so... I know last year I set a goal, and I am one deck short of it, which is standard. Really? Yeah, I... I didn't. I 
I have well, I never got to put it together, but I was just gonna build mono blue. I need two more of the the Hawatli gems, so and I have it. What decks do you have, have right have now? Tell right me. Right now, I have Legacy, Pre-Modern, Pioneer, Modern, um, PDH. So, uh, so like Popper EDH, Commander. That's like like Casual One, and then I have a CDH deck. Um, I didn't. I uh, I'll take that back. I didn't make uh, an Oathbreaker. I have a Tiny Leaders. I don't have a Standard. I don't have Vintage either, and that was one I excluded from the list. So, right now I have a proxy vintage, yep, legacy, modern, pre-moderns, multiple, yeah, pioneer, um, no standard, no standard. You have all commander. So cheap. I have multiple commanders, but not. PDH. I don't care. I'll I'll play your CEDH stuff with my garbage ones. I don't care. Do you have a uh, um, uh, uh, tiny leaders? No, I need to. <laughs> that, God, I can't think of build. the deck to build. That's an easy one. You just build like a Stoneforge deck, Rathalia. This makes it. Simple. But yeah, I'm real close. I'm real close too. Uh, just proxy up a vintage, dude. No. Why? Because I don't. There's no one I, like the goal of this was like so like, with Oathbreaker. Like, Everybody is proxying vintage. I guess I, I need a Canadian legacy play group right now. Yeah, more power to them. Um, a uh, a Canadian highlighter. Highland, yep. I I actually have yeah. I have a Yu Gi Oh deck. I have a Pokemon deck. <laughs> Dude. Oh my god, I'm so glad we're playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Jeff's in and on too. Oh man, it's gonna be great. It's just easy, it's so cheap. Anyways, but yeah, so that oh, was where I missed my goal for last year. I know I set that at the beginning of the last year, and I, I really, really do want to build standard, but I just never got around to it. Um, though I have a ton of standard cards, like I bet you I could build Grixis if I just picked up two more cards, but um, do you guys have any goals for either you guys or the cast in 2023? 2023, huh? I want to get all the dope secret layers for my cube. Yeah. To sleep longer than five hours. You're, that's going to be a tough one. Keep up with the cube. <laughs> cube um, more. Honestly, my goal for 2023 is to have a non burn legacy deck. It's not, that's yeah, a, that's there we go. It's something. I think you can get there. I mean, I got two forces. We're, we're, we're working. I am missing <clears throat> two ledger shredders. <clears throat> oh, no. Dude, the best part is Force of Will is about to go about down by like ten to twenty bucks. If that. Oh, if yeah, I'm that, picking up. That. I'm getting a box of it, and then if I don't open any in there, I'm gonna order them that day. Yep. Yeah. Matt uh, Matt Barrett's got a question. He says, "Okay, do you guys do you think Commander should have two sets of rules for EDH and the second one for CDH?" Yes, hundred percent. No. Yes. No. Yep. Why? Why? <clears throat> CDH is the bane of what. Commander is yes, we but like what dictates CDH? That's Our, the all, problem. Mana rocks purely, purely mana rocks. And everybody eye rolls when you go like land mana crypt, mana rock, mana rock time or not time. Or you can time twister, time twister wheel of fortune. Everybody goes like God. Oh, you can it. basically do that now with like pre cons, man. They get, like they put so many like cheap mana rocks that I've watched people with pre cons play three mana rocks in a turn. I mean, like jewel loaded. I mean, I don't know. I I just. There are cards that like Dockside Extortionist, Thoracle, like all that stuff. Yes, should... but Dockside should be banned no matter what, because even yes. in casual, it's annoying. Like well, that that's card what, that's is what just we're degenerate saying. on its own. CDH... That's why I'm saying you don't need separate rules, because I think it should be banned in CEDH C- C- too, because it's even better in that. I'm okay with infinite combos. I, um, it's it's uh, infinite combos that are more than two cards. Like I'm all for it. If, if it requires three cards hey, to get it going. Are you against Thalia consultation? Yeah, it's the worst. Thoracle's the worst. Or yeah, Thoracle's. Right. Yeah, it's the worst. It's just it makes the game. What you know, it just. I put it in all my decks. A choice for yeah. everyone. Well, it's just if if you want to play. Well, I guess you can. That's what rule zero is for your casual group. But aside, like let's say if you are a person that is going to a shop and you want to play EDH, you have to bring different power levels, and nobody can agree on the same power level. Yep, and that's my biggest problem with EDH. Well, that's why CDH people love, because there's like, we're all here to be cut. There is no, you're yeah. just here. Whereas everybody talks about their power levels being, this is too high, this is too low, this is, you said it was a 7, but it's really a 9, or mine's a 9, and I'm really a 6, you know, like all that, whatever, the scouters. Scouters. I, I think there's more to dictating what a CDH deck is and a non-CDH deck is, besides mana rocks. It's like, turn, when do you want the game to end? He's turn four or five. CEDH is like turn one, two, three. Well, t- t- turn one is like a, like so. People always thought, I, I'm Josh. You played CEDH. Like the game is not really ending on turn one, assuming that it's no. not one blue player and three non-blue players. Because if that's the case, then yes, it ends usually in turn one or two, just because the guy that's got Goto, the guy that's you got. Get it. 
turn two is a real possibility, even with blue, like us, even at yeah. a pot of blue players. Yeah, it's not. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's definitely. A, a well, you have to have the nut. You have to have the nut draw, and then also the the you can't interact with that's me. Draw word there. You can like it happened. Like the reason. See, that's what makes the EDH C EDH C EDH is when it's like your table is consistently like the game's over on turn two. Yeah. Well, it's because player A goes, I'm going to go for it. And then player B goes, I have to stop this. And player C goes, I'm going to go for it. And player D goes, I'm going to, yeah. And player D is like, I didn't have the interaction. Sorry, guys. I should have spoke up. But this is CDH, so everybody plays really, um, really stoic. And like, it's a game of heads up, whereas the whole point of EDH is communication. But, all right. Um, 2023 goals. I want to grow our YouTube channel for sure. And do something more significant. And I have ideas for content that I'd like to execute. I just don't want to be held accountable for them when I don't. So I'm not going to announce them here. <laughs> Fair. That's that's what I want. I want to finish collecting a single deck of all those things that we were talking about. And continue to grow my decks of garbage other card games. Because I have been having fun playing other card games. We're getting into the Disney? Uh, oh, I yeah. should try it. Well, we're all, I think we're all going to try it, right? Yeah. Okay. I got a buddy of ours, Brian, who's uh, up hardcore it. about it. He's like, I am going to go deep when it comes out. So <laughs> They haven't even established what the rules are. Like, It could be the worst game ever. I don't know. From what I heard, it's like kind of magic-y. Mm, I heard it's like closer to like Hearthstone. Did they need to set a rule set? Without the rules, I, I, I can't commit to anything. I yeah. won't be playing Flesh and Blood, and for those who love Flesh and Blood, hopefully that game continues on, but it sounds like it's... I hear very mixed things. Like, it's on the high, it's on the low, and it's kind of just with every card game that's a flash in the pan where it's, like, really cool for four years, and then it discontinues, like Force of mm-hmm. Will and all those other ones. Naruto went for, like, a long time. Man, seven, maybe. Finally, seven, yeah. maybe. Like, that's... And that's it had that's, a lot of sets. Yeah. It did. <clears throat> but and then it died. Yeah, but people pay big money for those cards still. Yeah, collect pieces. Yeah, they're oh, collect yeah. pieces. I have I have a bunch of like old rares that are worth like fifty to a hundred dollars. They're super sweet, nice. All right. But I like the show, so I keep them. Yeah, I know what Josh's Josh's twenty twenty three list is. He's gonna make me ten tunes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. He's gonna make me ten different tunes. I need them. Like one a month. I can do that. Mm-hmm. That's easy. That works. Just make it twelve, just one a month. No, 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 no. I like I like the bar I set. Ten is good. Yeah, there has to be enough so when you stream, you can just play all of them in succession. Yeah, I need a uh, just an, <laughs> <laughs> just Josh's originals, just fifty songs on loop. <laughs> that way, I can't get I flagged. Like, I told you I didn't get really flagged when I played our podcast in the background. Recorded before the end of the year, just like make a SoundCloud dump. Maybe I'll do that Friday. That's a good move. Yeah, Jeff, you got a goal. For like outside of magic, it's yeah, he already said his magic. It was to get a legacy deck that was. Oh yeah, yeah, never mind. Yeah, come on. So yeah, outside of legacy, again, probably to get more than five hours of sleep. That's a good one. That's a sick one. <laughs> that's, that's that one is certainly doable. You just got to break the ma- mindset sleep. of FOMO. That that really is what FOMO. it is. Fear of missing out. Oh, no, he's agreed. saying he wants more sleep, not less. No, I know, but the problem is yeah, you have to, break, to, you have to break the mentality of fear of missing oh, out. gotcha. Because I thought you were saying you have to have the mentality. I'm like, what are you talking no, no, about? No, no, That'll no, just no. make him most feel like the... he can't go to bed. You're in the no, fight with most it. of the reason I don't go to sleep is because I'm like, oh, I could be gaming right now. I could be doing something. You just have to be really okay with... out. Yeah. But it's more gaming, yeah. You have to be okay with just being like, I'm going to have to be a little bit worse at PUBG or whatever you play. <laughs> I actually did play a match of PUBG today, and we won. I said it. <laughs> Reading your mind. But we've been playing this free Gundam game lately. Yeah, I've seen it. I know what you're talking about. It's actually a lot of fun. We're looking for a third, so we can actually do like the PVE stuff. Mm. All right, guys. Let's Definitely see if we got anybody in our live callers. Anybody want to hop in? The, the only way to do that is through a Discord. If you don't have a way to a Discord, figure it out. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> There's ways to get Just there. Just do it. And... Just do it. And that's it, guys. It's been a wonderful year. We've got mm, f- sixty some hours of content out there. 
Jesus. that much more. Yeah, it's from just well, this year alone. Boy, this has got to be more. Than, oh, just this, no, this year. is just this year alone. Matt Barlow. I, right, I need a link. All right, <laughs> we are officially in the after show. Matt, the link should be in our Facebook. You didn't give me a hot take. I was gonna say. Oh yeah, you said Russian, a hot take. Russian <laughs> magic cards look the best. And that's Aurora and Russian. Matt, you need to throw Russian anime. All right, Matt. Yeah, good. you don't have the alt art. Get the alt art is sick, dude. It looks like a star destroyer. Star destroyer. Let me see from if I can get a link to you. Crazy. <clears throat> we're still live, right? Yeah, we're live. Yeah. We're in the after show. Matt wants to come in. We're gonna find him. Knock. I'm sending you a link, Matt. You will find it. I'll be right back. I need water. <clears throat> Boom, 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 boom. I have a few questions for him. How did you find us? <laughs> that is the biggest one. Who are you? I will always find you. Oh, my God. <clears throat> my voice is starting to go, too, which is annoying. I should be better tomorrow, JB. Oh, they all went to go take a crap. That's what they do best. Bada boom, baby. <clears throat> All right. Sorry, I'm dying. Matt, I just sent you a link via Discord. Or sorry, I sent you via Facebook. Let's see if I can't get a shot of this wall of posters. Is this going to do it? Kind of? Yeah. Big old wall. I keep calling you Bartlett. I'm sorry. It's Barrett. My, uh... Because you're thinking of the Dells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dude, yeah. we're going <laughs> on the Bartlett show. <laughs> oh, man. But why can't I send it to you? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I'm getting you, dude. I'm getting you. Here, I'm gonna put it in the sh the uh, actual thing because I'm trying to send it to you. But Facebook's is Matt Barrett is a tough um, name to come by. So you I still have a challenge out. If you can name the series for every single poster that I got up, I'll give you 50 bucks. That's going to be tough because you have two obscure ones. Yeah, I know. It's all shit I like, though. So, Matt, what you want to do is hop in the Discord, and then when you're in the Discord, you're going to see that there's a live show queue going to that room, and I can pull you in from there. <clears throat> If you don't have Discord, I don't know how you're living, but that's that's all I can say. <clears throat> I don't know how you're living, please. My Pokemon breeder came in today, so I, my proxy Pokemon breeder. Oh, you can't. I don't have my camera on. What am I doing? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> proxy? You, you didn't see the chat. I sent to Ali. I was like, fight me, bitch. No, I didn't. You should see. He's like, oh, poor Tony can't afford a third blast. I'm like, it's in the mail. Mm -hmm. All right. Um... Commander Starkoff. All right. <clears throat> so what I can do here is... I'm going to pull you in, Matt, and that should work. Pull him in. Yeah, I'm pulling him in. I'm pulling him in. If he's on his phone, and we'll never hear him. That's okay, though. All right. <clears throat> So, Matt, what I did is now you should be able to see there's, like, these hidden items. You should be able to just click on podcast and get in there. And you'll pop hey, right he's in. in here. He's already in. I'm in now. So. Yo. And it'll say if the video work. There we go. Ah. You're not the, if you want to get on video, you don't have to. But you can if you like. <laughs> Matt, how you doing? Nah, that's all right. 
Yeah, not too bad yourselves. Good, man. Dude, I got one question for you. Actually, a couple. One. How does <laughs> one? How, first, how did you hear about the cast? Um, I actually stumbled across it on Facebook. Oh yeah. <clears throat> was it from? Uh, were you in one of the Facebook groups that I massively spam to all the time? <laughs> um, probably. No, I think it was. Um, you did one of the leaks, or you seem to be up to date with you know, leaks or yeah. information that's coming out on the magic at the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I try to be pretty quick on that stuff, meaning that, like, as soon as they're streaming it, I'm taking screenshots and I'm just throwing it, <laughs> like, onto Facebook. Because I like to be first, because, as Josh knows, I'm the fastest and strongest member of this cast. <laughs> he just nods as he flips through a bunch of pages. Uh, he knows what's up. So, what's he looking for? I guess, when did you start listening from an episode like, standpoint, I'm gonna go play Pioneer with this guy after work here or after this podcast. He's like, "Bring your trade <laughs> stuff," and I'm looking through it. I'm like, "There's nothing." <laughs> Man, I, um, yeah, this is the first podcast I've actually listened to, or even really? been part of with yours. Oh sure. Um, I've just been mainly part of your Facebook group probably for the last few months. Oh hell yeah, dude, that's fantastic. Cool. Usually, like I said, I try to be quick. And I try to be more active on Twitter. I don't know if you're on Twitter. Twitter's difficult. Like I, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like it's that's a young man's game, and I cannot keep up with it. I'm driving. So EDH is your main jam. Um, probably more the competitive side of it, just because of the player group I play with. What do you yeah, mean for your commander? I, um, I've got three that you'd probably say uh, CDH. Um. One is the green white Savala. That's mm-hmm. typically turn three onwards. Uh, then I've got Arkham Daxon, which is just mono blue artifacts. So that can go off from turn one onwards. That's the one the that you. Hand. It's like the you polymorph an artifact kind of deal. Kinda. You basically sacrifice a artifact creature and then grab a non art a non creature artifact and just put it straight onto the field. What's the main target for that one? It used to be Paradox Engine, but I don't think that's what it is anymore. Well, that's banned. Uh, it really depends on what I'm up against and what's playing. Sure. Um, I can go Dark Steel Forge with Mike's and Lattice and then Nerves Disc. Yep, yep. So I can nuke okay. everyone's board states. <laughs> or it's um, um, trying to get the dramatic reversal Ice Conceptor with Mike's and Lattice out and just go infinite. Yeah. Um, Dude, the other one is so good. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. It's a great card. Um, yeah. And the new Marel card what i said before is like a bit of a sleeper when that actually originally got released everyone's like yeah it's a good card it as a commander and playing it as soldier stacks hmm. my mates who have got turn one decks and stuff like that they roll their eyes and <laughs> don't want to verse me when that's on the field that's funny do you so i guess in where, where are you where are you about in uh australia uh, so southeast Queensland, so it's the east coast, probably about halfway up the mainland. Hmm. Yeah, I was about to say it's got to be east or west, right? There's nothing too much going on in the middle, but does anybody? I Not guess, really. Out there is Commander like the thing. Does anybody play sixty card formats out there? There's little sprinklings of it through southeast Queensland. Um, it's not a big thing here. We've got so where I live, we've got. Sunny Coast, there's two stores that play card games. Mm-hmm. Then as you go down the coastline, there's probably another dozen stores or so. And sure. everything, majority of everything is Commander. Makes you sense. might get one store that may do Pioneer. Got it. But typically, someone comes in with a net deck, dominates absolutely everyone, <laughs> destroys the, the player group, and then everyone just goes back to Commander kind of thing. <laughs> Okay. That sounds like fair me. enough. <laughs> it's like, ah, I'm well, done. That's what I do. I... From, from my little pod's idea, you can have, you know, a turn one deck with Commander. If you don't have the right cards or someone has a bit of interaction, the pre con can win at the table. Mm-hmm. Like, sure. It, it, it makes it a little bit more fair for the way we kind of play the thing around here. Yeah. Um, the other thing we do, which we've noticed that a lot of people don't do around the world or even in our area, is if you have a clean win in Commander, 
the other three play on. Yeah, so we do that here. There's a store near us that has com- competitive e- e- CD or EDH, and what they do is you vote that player out. They go, he's at the win. I want to continue this game. We vote you out. You win the pod. You get the prize, but we're going to continue playing. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense because it's like there's still game to be had or whatever. And, and that's also because it funnels into like a winner's pod. Yeah. Yeah, well, I did one tournament earlier this year, and if you won cleanly and didn't disrupt the board states of everyone else, you actually got more win- uh, more points for winning mm-hmm. than you had to destroy everything to get the win. Sure. Mm-hmm. So just make it a little bit fairer kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I played my Arkham Daxon deck. Uh, a friend of mine was playing Kess. Mm-hmm. And typically every round, the first 10, 15 minutes were up. Well done. <laughs> Get to our third game. We both are at the same table. Our decks just ap- absolutely failed us and almost got killed by a Cranko um, yes. impact yes. premise. Yeah. <laughs> I. So, I literally drop something to help a mate get his win so he could at least get out, and I'm just like, I don't care if I lose. <laughs> so when you guys play these tournaments, how, how are they structured out there? Are they Do you guys have, like, small ones, and then do you have, like, a, a like a quarterly or a yearly big one? No, see, so that's where kind of Australia sucks. We don't have that kind of big size of numbers or, sure. like, we don't even really get GPs down here or anything like that. Mm-mm. Um so it's normally just in store. We do our own little thing, and that's the end of it. Just up to the store owner kind of thing. Yeah. How do you guys do for like um, product product releases? How like is there when we're releasing here? Like let's say it's September fourth. Is it like weeks after that you guys get that product, or how's that delay? Is it all same day? It really depends on if the stock's been delayed to Australia or not. We sure. have been suffering a lot. We've had stock re diverted back to america oh um, wow i didn't know it was yeah. that bad um a lot of our stock for uh double masters got sold here in australia and went straight back to the u.s oh. like yeah how do you guys i guess for, for your singles market is it just brutal out there because there's just like here it's like everything i order it's here within two to three days at the at the very least is it just like a limited qual or quantity thing or is just shipping overseas is the issue um single wise we do struggle a bit obviously we don't have the quantity that you would have over there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um the one good thing where i am is i've got a couple of guys who do online auctions so i can legitimately message them and get what i need typically straight from them yeah. If not, we've got a really good single store down at Brisbane, which is only about an hour for here, and it takes a couple of days to get to us. Sure. So that's good. Um, at least you got options. Tip- yeah, it's typically pretty good. Um, the reason why I brought up the question before about should we have two different rule sets for Commander? Yeah. Is because from. You know, from competitive players' side of playing Commander, there's cards like Golos or Hole Breacher, and there's probably still a couple of other cards that are in the ban list. From our point of view, didn't need the ban because we run so much interaction. They're just another card on the field. Right, right. We can I mean, deal with it. So between the intellect, like, so when they make the decision, like Iona, which is just horrendous, terrible decision, but like Hole Breacher, I understood. But for what you're saying is when you cards like Hull Breacher, you're just like, it's no big thing because there's two other cards that you probably already have in your deck, Narset and Notion Thief, which are the same goddamn effect um, that are doing yeah. the same thing. And on top of that, it's not like it's not like the other EDHs where you're typically... I mean, sometimes you're just playing big ships, right? You just get a big guy and you go to town and you don't have any removal, but with the C EDH, you have a lot of removal or counter counter spells, yeah, so you have the ability to yeah. stop them anyways. Yeah. And it's just another oh. thing you'd stop instead of whatever combo they were going to do. They now have that in their hand instead. Yeah, well, for Hull Breacher, it was more of a political piece that we used. Yeah. So we could put it out, it stuff people up, but then it'll be like, look, I won't attack you for the next few turns if you let me destroy it. Oh, sure. Got like, it. That's, that's how it kind of sat with all of us. That's and funny. for 
for goal loss, we had a guy who had a competitive deck with goal loss. Yeah. The amount of times he actually won out of the amount of times he played. Zero. Like, he had more chance of winning it on a scratchy than he did with winning with goal loss. <laughs> like, we knew how That's he won. Right. Yeah. And we could we could stop it every single time. Oh, you mean like mm-hmm. stop the golos and call it a day? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The one. We card. ended up calling him Scoops. Yeah, because <laughs> that's how his <laughs> games ended up ended up <laughs> happening. Um, but from you know, I get with the casual players; they want to play, you know, ten, twenty yeah, turns. Yeah. Right, see you, Josh. See you, bud. Um. And a lot of people I've seen that have said, oh, I don't like infinite combos. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't want to put into play. I don't want to have interaction in my deck because it pulls away from what I'm playing. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to run your deck that way, why does someone else have to completely change their deck to suit you? That's where... Yeah. I was going to say, that's where the the issue that I run into all the time is... That commander committee, I the, the four guys that are in charge of it, maybe it's five now, they, I think they do what they like in their own pods. So, for example, like Primeval Titan is on that list. Iona is on that list. And they're just like these cards that somebody, like they just have a f- bad taste in their mouth from that they got beat one time or, you know, they had to suffer through because they want to play, like be play, not scoop or whatever. Um, they have these bad tastes in their mouth and then they, that exists into the – area beyond that whereas you know from like a dock side perspective as a player as from a casual perspective when someone lands a dock side and gets 11 treasures you're like well i can never win this game this is ridiculous or somebody will of fortunes and have a smothering tithe in play and nobody has mana i go all right well i'm about to get 30 mana you know um but the the committee doesn't see that as problematic i don't see dock side as a problem because if you think about it from the list of cards that we've got to play, yeah. you've got counter spells from stopping it from even entering the field. Yep. There's cards to stop the EB- ETB effect. Mm-hmm. There's cards that stop the artifact from being at, um, activated so that they can't sacrifice it to gain the mana from it. Right. You can do artifact white, which what are they going to do? Sacrifice a lot in your turn and do what with it? Right, right. So but in, there's multiple ways to stop dock side. So when I look at like like the dock side argument, what I'm saying is like dock side from a power level standpoint, it's so much more powerful than Iona Primeval Titan. Maybe Sylvan Primordial kind of is on the edge there, but that goes into the land destruction argument. But the, the, like where I am like mentally, that's where I those are the cards I think of. Like if these are banned, yeah. then therefore a power level like Thassa's Oracle or uh, Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation like. Why that's even a thing is absolutely ridiculous. And the rules are, like you said, how come it's okay for them to ban it and then just be like, well, you can just rule zero it. Then it's like, wh- why even have a ban list if everything could just be rule zero then? Mm-mm. Well, I thought the original idea of the ban list was if it was um, format warping. Right. Which I like, like to unsavory me. Unsavory gameplay or something, or like unfriendly ga- gameplay yeah. is one of them. But they recently came out and said that they need to look at all aspects of all levels or all aspects of Commander now. Yeah. So to me, that says they need to, they're going to start looking from a competitive point of view as well as a casual point of view. Yeah. And that's why I think two rule sets would be better because, you know, Dockside doesn't need to be banned if we're doing competitive. Right. Um, Golos could be unbanned. Old Breacher could be unbanned. And, who knows what else could actually come out. Right. But from a casual side of things, they could get rid of Thassus Oracle. They could get rid of Dockside Extortioners and, you know, basically put a ceiling on how fast a casual play can go because you wouldn't need Mana Crypt or Mana Bolt. Right. God, they could get rid of Soul Ring or whatever they wanted to do yeah. to slow that gameplay down. Mm-hmm. Ban some of the infinite combos so they're too easy to go off early. But competitive wise, what in the last two, three years would actually have to be banned? There's not really you, like much. I, I, the only one I would give you is like maybe Paradox Engine because that one was just like, Jesus, that was out of control. 
Like, yeah. That was like, and then they unbanned Flash and they put it right back on there because Flash Hulk was just like, what are you guys thinking? Come Too on. Too instant. Yeah. Uh, just like check yeah. it out. That one was like just. Well, I think yeah. you would, you'd maybe leave the ban list as it is for competitive, maybe take a couple off. Yeah. But then casual would get a bigger ban list. Mm hmm. Because when you look at everything, I wouldn't unban everything. <laughs> it's CDH, God, man, I... let people have fun, do yeah. what they want. No, the... stuff black braids. <laughs> Turn on nah, black braids. No, no, that one, that one means like no one's playing the game for the rest of the game just because what braids is doing, especially now with Jewel Lotus, you'll always get it or whatever. It's just it means we're not going to well, play again. That, yeah, there's that black elf. That I think turn one, you get it out with um, opposition agent, and no one gets to draw. Yeah, 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 yeah. there we uh, go. It's from Morning Tide, I believe. But yeah, it's... yeah, Marwin or something. Yeah, there you go. That's a that's a cute one. Here you go. All right, everybody locked up. <laughs> yeah. That but sounds again, perfect. But, but again, like from a CDH pod, like it's so. Uh, let me ask you this then: from a CDH standpoint, yep. when I when I sit down and I'm like, I I I have a rule about CDH. If you're not playing blue, I think your deck is bad. And I know you may you may disagree with that, but I, like, if I sit down as a blue player and there's three other non-blue players, I just feel like this can't even be a real game. I try to go faster. That's why Thoracal exists in like all my CDH decks. But if there's at least yep. two blue players, the game can actually go the distance because you know if you if you're sitting down with a goal or uh, not not Golos, uh, what's the the helm the hel- scoops? No, the the mono red helm combo. I forget the guy's Goto. Um, the guy with mono green with the power guy. The when he taps for mana equal to its power. Like you sit oh, down with yeah. three of those. Yeah, and you're just like looking at this stuff. Like I can't do anything, and I don't. There's not a hand I could possibly keep that has enough counter spells. Like when it's just not blue base, I just don't understand when why you're the only one that has to deal with things. Yeah, where like you said with like the Golos player, when he sits down, you guys know exactly what he's going to do. You're going to be able to nitpick, and that's the same is true for like Goto. You're like. There's three blue players. There's a Goto player. Let's let him try to do his thing, and we'll laugh at him like comically, and we'll each take our turn to counter his his key spell and move on. Yep. But well, the other one you got is Prick. That yeah. is a turn one win most of the time. <laughs> oh man, CDH is the, the beauty. The beauty thing about Crick is if you time it right, he's half killed himself for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's Sorry. the the black black four guy, the one that makes everything Frexian mana, all your yep. black symbols. Yeah, that's just... yep. All right, gents, I gotta go. Bye, Jeff. Yeah, nice I'll meeting you, man. Right. Thanks for watching the show. No, you're all right. See you, mate. Yeah, pretty interesting. The stuff but I've I've only been playing since Xanarkar Rising. Like that was my first time I started playing Commander. Sure. And like a lot of the guys that I play with have played at G. GPs here in Australia yeah. or have been judges or stuff like that. So my introduction into it was Creek and playing pre-cons against that and learning all the different aspects and trying to get my power level level up to where it is. And yeah. I can go toe to toe with these guys now or get them rolling their eyes because I've just pulled out a deck I've just built and they're like, nah, not versing it. <laughs> I, I, I like that idea. Like I'm not, I, I don't I pick a different deck. I, I, I don't know why that just appeases me, but when you're doing like a tournament setting, it's like, I'm going to bring the most competitive thing, but when it's just you and your friends, yeah, it's like, whatever. No. So, oh, it's how much salt you can get out of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mining for days. So, yep. uh, out of all the things, like I guess from a, a magic standpoint, what is, what is something that upsets you? Um, probably just all this argument about com- commander levels. Why, <laughs> dude? Well, you're you're preaching to the choir. I hate it. It's either all or nothing. You know what I mean? Either it is legal or it's definitely. not legal. Yeah, like we have kind of ruled zero Golos where I am. Yeah, purely for the fact we don't feel like it was a just kind of band. Yeah. Because it wasn't Golos that got the win. He was able to help you get there, but it wasn't that that got him the win. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to me that you guys are ru- using Rule Zero in the reverse of what most people talk about <laughs> using it for. Because everyone's yeah. like, oh, yeah, we have to ban this. And you're like, no, I'm unbanning cards. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um and we also, if we can play a hard decks, doesn't mean we have to win with them. We can just go into the game and just muck around or have a bit of fun. Like um, the other day, 
I did the whole um, void mirror knowledge pool. Yep, yep. Where you just lock None of us up. had creatures. None <laughs> of us had creatures. I just did it because stuff it. Yeah. My mate beside me just goes, you play that, I'm scooping. Play yep, it. cool. Yeah. yeah, do that. There's only one. Yeah. Is there, there's one out to it now, maybe a couple more, because channel, like you could be sage it now. That's about well, it. Well, yeah. What ended up happening is we counted how many cards were left in our deck, and I lost by two. <laughs> like, but it was just a fun way to lose. Yeah, you're like, okay. Like, That's funny. Um, in the same deck, I get to do the Charbelcher ability. <laughs> Mono white, endless uh, horizons, pull all your planes out of your deck. And then one I shot no... One shot someone, yep. <laughs> and that was with a almost completely foiled out Brayer deck. <sighs> That's a hoot. So, like, sometimes you we just play Commander for the memes and for the laugh and the fun of it. Well, that's How like... do you guys feel about proxies? Yeah, it's a big one. I always ask that question. I gotta know. All right, so for proxies, we allow proxies. Mm-hmm. If they are cheap proxies, like, you, you know, you, your bulk stuff or up to, I don't know, $100, mm-hmm. as long as you're willing to go get them, yes. we're cool with it. Okay. Um, the expensive stuff, we understand, but when it comes to a sanctioned tournament, mm-hmm. no proxies. Magic rules sure. still apply. Casual play, or just you know us just mucking around. We don't care. That's fair enough. I mean, it's interesting. Which I think, how, I think it's about the same with everywhere. Yeah, I mean that's that's. I mean, once it's sanctioned, like it's all bets are off, right? But we we have yeah. a, we have a place here. It's not sanctioned, but they run like a tournament series where they do a weekly commander every Saturday. It's it doesn't matter your power level, but you know, winner take all. And it's you know the it's. X amount of pods, those pods all advance in the, the final pod. Winner in the final pod gets the whole pot. And then based on how many wins you get, you get like a point value. And then it goes to the end of the year. So it's 12 bucks a week or 12 bucks to enter. Yeah. And then $2 goes to the end of the year pool. The end of the year pool, the top 16 guys in the leaderboard, then get to play for however much money was $2 and so forth. Um, and they allow proxies, anything you want. doesn't matter. But, oh, so we, that'd just get nasty with us. Just because yeah. of the level we play at. Well, so, like, it became, like, the, from a store owner standpoint, it's just, like, you want the people there versus, hey, I can't afford a time twister or I can't afford, you know, an underground sea. Therefore, I can't play because I keep coming to the, the you know, the game with just things that I can't afford um, and just losing. Yeah, yeah. But, like... It's it has a pretty good following, about twenty to twenty five guys, and most of the time those guys they use that store credit to then buy the cards that they want, you know. Um, also, it allows people like for example, if you if you don't feel like playing your three CDH decks, and you don't need it, like I don't know if you have Blood Pot available to you, but Blood Pot is like a completely different shift, and that's like you know different dual lands and so forth. Uh, and then you just if you don't have those things, you're, you're talking three grand out of the pocket just to change up your deck, whereas these guys. It's free. I'm I like the idea, um, but as far as like sixty card formats, it's never going to be proxies. I, I I don't agree with that from a sanction standpoint. Yeah. But. Um. Yeah. See, my local store. Um. He's only been running probably almost three years now. Mm-hmm. Every time he's put a standard event on or a pioneer event on, without a doubt, someone has legitimately net decked the top decks in the format right now has literally just gone bought the entire deck turns up logs absolutely everyone there <laughs> like doesn't even try to just be nice about it absolutely flogs them and then no one wants to turn up yeah. and then those said people are bitching because the format's not running and then they don't like the commander format yep. so and like what- when I worked at a store, I worked at a store for about four years. The number one thing that we learned, because we were all competitive players, and when we opened up that store, um, was yep. appeal to your casual crowd. They will bring you more money if you appeal to a competitive crowd. It turns away all most competitive guys. Let's say, for example, myself. If I'm trying to min max my finances, I'm going to buy online. I'm not going to buy at my local store. As much as I say I want to, if I'm trying to min max, it's going to cost me eighty dollars cheaper to get a deck online. I'm going to do that. So that money's not even yeah. coming to the store. Now, your casual player, they like just being in your environment, but if it's all just cutthroat, 
like it was when we first opened, we saw like a big drop off of how many people. And then when we went away from the, the competitive and went into like more casual scene, we grew a lot faster, like from just a, a, a knowing standpoint. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's, so there's two stores that I know of. Um, I'm quite, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm absolute friends with the owners, but I'm close to them. Um, they've both said they're put in like power level caps. Um, one store has gone as far as they only do pre, um, pre-cons for the uh, for sure. commander. Wow. wow. That's so low. I mean... um, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, some of the pre-cons have been getting pretty spicy lately. The, the, the uh, Warhammer a... ones are amazing. They're super strong. Um, yeah, but then even the, the human deck or the horror deck, um, the horror deck's really good if you're versing like competitive decks because you just get to rip all those really good artifacts out of the deck and just play them against yeah. them. We have a video of Josh just beating our heads up with that. That's from the Commander uh-huh. Boulder's Gate, right? Yeah. Yeah, that has got guy's... like the Davy Jones dude. Yeah, there you go. That guy's nuts. Yep. Um, and now everyone's going to have access to Phyrex and Obliterator, which is going to make it more fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, from that point of view, those two decks were probably more the highlight of the last lot of pre-cons from a power level side of things. But what I've heard, when you go pre-con versus pre-con, the goad deck is spicy. Because you basically sit there, go to everyone's stuff, and do nothing. That's the blue-red dragon deck, right? Yeah. Yeah, that one's sweet. That one is good. Because you just you force interaction. You're like, you guys are going to have to battle out. I'm just going to sit here. And when you guys are all tapped out, I'm coming in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but then the other store didn't do pre-con league. They did, like, they've just kind of capped it at a power level. And they, like you said, capping the power level kind of to a certain level, got heaps of people in, but then he realized there were still people that wanted to flop the big dick on the table and see who was best. <laughs> and if there was a table, they got to play those decks against each other. Yeah. Get it out of the system, then go back down to the little level. Sure. So. We got a store that kind of does that. They separate by power level. I find it quite boring playing pre-con level. Because it's like, play a card, pass. Play a card, pass. Yeah. Oh, I might swing two or three damage and that's it. Yeah. There's no interaction. There's no, someone's about to play something good. You stop them. Then they got the shit, so they swing something at you, or... Like... <laughs> but... Yeah, I'm with you. Um, so, the, the group of us challenged the store. Um, the reason why I keep bringing up the whole salt thing is when I first started learning Commander, because I was only modified pre-cons, mm-hmm. I'd get pretty salty that I kept losing, no matter... I'd be a turn behind constantly. Right. So I'd get... They thought I was getting salty at them, but I wasn't. I was getting more upset that I just I couldn't get across that line. Yeah. So we all got T-shirts made up. I didn't get a choice in mine. They handed it to me, and it had Lord of Salt on the back. <laughs> so I like that. I like your know, community already. They're just like you're the Lord of Salt, and you're like, oh, all right. <laughs> hey, I make them salty now, so it's all good. <laughs> and. My 10-year-old daughter plays as well. I oh, made man. her a Chatterfang deck okay. uh, for her birthday. Um, she's known as the Duchess of Salt. <laughs> and then my six-year-old, he's always around with me as well. Um, he's known as Salt Packet because he's <laughs> only six. That's so funny. Yeah, he'll start getting an understanding of magic in the next couple of years. I'm sure you... Um, 